one to the GMAC Bowl in Mobile, Alabama, the original home of Mardi Gras in the United States, a port city where historically one would engage in trade and return home with riches, a place where tonight Ben Roethlisberger hopes to mine his fortune. Like his namesake across the pond, everything about Ben Roethlisberger is big. His frame, his name, and most importantly, his game. Roethlisberger to throw. He fires it into the end zone. Touchdown! Ben rolling near side, looking to throw. Touchdown, Miami! What an athletic play by Ben Roethlisberger. Touchdown, Miami! Arguably the preeminent quarterback in college football, he's looking to add to his record-setting career in what could be his last game in a Red Hawk uniform. to the GMAC Bowl in Mobile, Alabama under the lights here at Ladd People's Stadium. The first meeting ever between Louisville and Miami. Miami with the longest winning streak in the entire nation. Kickoff coming up in just a bit. Right now, back to Chris Fowler in the studio. Mark, thank you. Trevor Alberts and Mark May alongside. The game we've been looking forward to. You want to see Miami. You love the offense. The, one of the hottest teams in the country. It's a MAC team that was 8-0 right. against a Conference USA team in Louisville that was 5-3 and three and got worked over in this bowl game last year by Marshall out of the MAC when word was filtering down that John L. Smith was leaving. So it's a conference pride kind of game. Absolutely, Chris. I think that's what's intriguing to me about these games. We've all heard about Ben Roethlisberger, how he may go to the NFL. There's certain people sitting at this desk who are going to tell you that this <laughs> game isn't even going to be close. That's the point. That's what I like. The number one ranked team, Mark, in that conference, playing the third best team in Conference USA. Say, I argue Conference USA from top to bottom is more tough than the MAC Conference. That's the whole key. How does the third place team in one conference do against clearly the best team in the MAC Conference? They won't do very well. I think Miami's going to win this game in Handley, and I think the key is when you look at Miami, obviously it's your quarterback in Roethlisberger, but this is an offense that spreads the ball around. They spread the wealth around their entire offense. They do a great job of that. But here's the key. The bigger picture for this game is for the MAC Conference. They only send two teams to bowl games this year. This is a statement game, not only for Miami, Ohio, but for the entire conference. You can you better believe the entire MAC conference looking on here. Louisville, by far the more experienced bowl team. They've been six straight years. For Miami, this is their first bowl game in 17 years. We look forward to a shootout. We'll see you back here at halftime. It's the Red Hawks and the Cardinals coming up from Mobile. Folks, we'll have the call after this. Every play, every play, every play. Play like champions tonight because that's what you are. Show the world one more time Miami football and what it looks like. Champions again tonight. Let's go. Here we go. Welcome back, everyone, to the GMAC Bowl here in Mobile, Alabama. We're at Lad People's Stadium. Just a few moments before the opening kickoff, number 15, ranked Miami putting the nation's longest winning streak of 12 games on the line in the first meeting ever against Louisville. Louisville making its sixth consecutive bowl appearance. Season's greetings, everyone, from all of us here at ESPN to all of you at home. I'm Mark Jones along with Bob Davey, Holly Rowe, joining us in just a few minutes. Ben Roethlisberger, Bob, has put up some gaudy, some huge numbers this year, but even he says, hey, every time I go out on the field, I'm trying to disprove some of my critics. Well, Mark, you're right. Ben Roethlisberger has all the statistics, but we all know statistics are relative. If you're not careful, they can be deceiving. But I've had the chance to watch him practice the last couple of days, and for people that haven't seen him, let me be the first one to tell you this guy's for real first when you meet him you see how big he is he's all of six foot five 245 pounds he's an athlete he can run third he has a strong arm and he's accurate he's completed 69 percent of his passes mark we've seen some great players this year but ben roethlisberger may be the best we've seen his counterpart on the other side of the field a guy out of the bayou country baton rouge stefan lafors a quarterback who has thrown for over 3,000 yards this year and like the gumbo out of that area he's kind of <laughs> spicy too he's got some talent well when you ask louisville head coach bobby petrino about stefan lafors he calls him his hero why he's not very big 
doesn't have a particularly strong arm, but in his first year as starter, he's first team all-conference USA. Last year, he threw, for, threw only seven passes for 49 yards. This year, he's thrown for almost 3,000 yards. Tonight, he's out to prove one thing, Mark. Ben Roethlisberger isn't the only talented quarterback on this field. A lot of talent on the field, and speaking of which, let's go downstairs to Holly Rowe. Well, guys, we talk about the great numbers of Ben Roethlisberger, but he couldn't do it out there by himself. He has had two terrific receivers this year. Martin Nance is a sophomore who's already set a single-season record for receiving yards with 1,329. On the other side, Michael Larkin, a senior at just 5'8", holds the career record for touchdowns and touchdown reception yardage. He is a great, court, a great compliment to Ben Roethlisberger. He'll need both of them to win tonight. All right, Holly, and we are set for the opening kickoff. Miami, Ohio will receive the Cardinals to kick off. Back deep, it's Mike Smith and Daryl Hunter for Miami. And this is Smith. Smith, the backup tailback, brought down to the 12-yard line. And let's take a look at Roethlisberger, a guy who didn't start playing quarterback, start playing the position till his senior year of high school. Now look at the backs and the receivers. Behind him, it's Murray, and they'll switch things up in the backfield, won't they, Bob? Yeah, Mark, not only Cal Murray, you see them there listed as the starter, but Mike Smith, number 25, they'll actually alternate every three or four plays, regardless of who has the hot hand. Murray, 5'10", a 200-pound senior, the team's leading rusher. First down and 10. They're going to start off from their own 12-yard line. Three receiver formation, one back. Roethlisberger complete and a nice hit at the 14-yard line. Coming up from the corner is Antoine Harris to make the stick on Murray. Let's take a look at the offensive line featuring three three-year starters. And Mark, how about this stat? Six sacks in the last seven games, and they throw the football a lot. Uh, one guy they're going to have to keep out of their face is Marcus Jones with eight sacks, the team leader for Louisville. Second down now for the Red Hawks. Those are the ball resting on the 14. Out of the shotgun, Roethlisberger completes the pass for the first down. Out to the 29-yard line. Hits number 15, Martin Nance, his favorite target on the season. Let's take a look at the linebackers now for Louisville. McCune, the leading tackler, joined by Johnson and Rob Day. And mark a homecoming for Robert McCune right here, Mobile, Alabama. Amazing how many players Louisville has on this team from Alabama and Florida. Brent Johnson, one of their best players in the secondary, strong safety, also a homecoming game for him. And with a win tonight, they might get a few more players out of this area. First down and 10 for the Red Hawks. High snap, Roethlisberger hands it off to Murray. Murray with some nice yardage between the tackles out near another first down. Brought down to the 39. These are two of the more prolific offenses in the entire country. Louisville averaging 35 points a game, 13th in the nation. Miami, 42 and a half, fifth in the country. And Mark, that's the good news. The bad news, Louisville's defense, 87th in the NCAA in total defense. Last two games, they've given up 45 to Houston, 40 to Cincinnati. They have their hands full tonight. Today is a defensive coordinator's nightmare for both teams. Roethlisberger on the play fake, a big play for them, and it's complete. At the 41-yard line, that's Martin Nentz making his second catch of the ball game and another first down. Finally brought down by Rob Day. Mark in football 101 a little later. We're going to talk about play-action passing. Ben Roethlisberger, a great job with ball handling skills. And the next thing I love about him, he throws this deep comeback route to Martin Nance. Not only can he throw the deep ball, the short touch pass, but he throws that deep comeback and the NFL has to love that one. They sure do. Roethlisberger closing in on yet another max single season record. Just six more yards to make it. First down and ten. That's Smith, the backup tailback. Looking like the leading man with another first down at the 27-yard line. Brett Johnson finally brings him down. A 13-yard pickup. Mark, you're going to see this over and over. It's just zone blocking. Then Mike Smith right there sees the cutback. Louisville, nobody on the backside squeezing that thing. And Miami, not a lot of plays, Mark. 
They hang their hat on their signature play, the zone running play, and right now you see that Louisville has their hands full trying to stop this offense. Another first down and 10 for the Red Hawks. Roethlisberger working out of the shotgun. Has time, and this is where he really hurts you. Wide open, touchdown. Mike Larkin. They methodically move it down the field for a touchdown, like they've done so many times on the season. And Mark Miami does as good a job as anyone in the country of creating plays off scramble situations. Mike Larkin told me this week his route actually doesn't start until Ben Roethlisberger scrambles. A couple of roommates hooking up on that touchdown pass and catch for Larkin, his 10th touchdown reception this season. The 23rd of his career, and they are out of the gate quickly. Mark, that's too easy, isn't it? To sure, look that, that way. opening drive and go down the field like that. Opening drive, Bob, that started on their own 12 yard line. The extra point is good, and Roethlisberger with his 81st of his career. Touchdown pass. This is what it looked like. Could be more to come. More after this. Flip card. Flip card. Welcome back, everyone. Lad People Stadium, the GMAC Bowl, Miami, Ohio. Out of the gate quickly, six plays. They all used up uh, all of, uh, what, three minutes almost? Like you said, Bob, going to commercial looked extremely easy. Roderick Clark back deep now to return this kickoff for Louisville. Louisville out of Conference USA making their sixth consecutive bowl appearance. Mark, to give you an idea about this Louisville offense, because it looks early here like it's going to be one of those kind of games. They're number one in the country in yards per play. They average almost seven yards every time they snap the football. Looks like they're going to need every inch of that seven yards tonight. And here's Clark inside his own 10 where he starts off. Clark with a nice return out to the 32-yard line. 22 yards on the return, and one more look at that touchdown to Larkin. We talk about Miami, a great job of creating plays off scramble situations. This guy's 6'5", 245. Mike Larkin adjusting his route mark when Ben Roethlisberger scrambles. No way a coverage, a secondary, can hold their disciplined coverage lanes that long. Let's see if Stefan LaFleurs can answer. Michael Bush, the back behind him, LaFleurs rolls out. Pass incomplete. At the 34-yard line intended for the tight end, Tinch. And here's a look at LaFleur's uh, first-team all-conference USA. Guy who patiently waited three years to become the starter. Here's the backs and receivers, Lionel Gates. One of three backs you'll see at that position for Louisville. And, Mark, people are going to be impressed with the skill position athletes of Louisville. They alternate three backs, and they're all big physical running backs. Gates, Bush, and Shelton returning from injury. Second down and ten. This is Gates. Gates gains about three, brought down by Terrell Jones. Let's take a look at the offensive line for the Louisville Cardinals. They've allowed just ten sacks this season. And Mark, a lot of that has to do with Stefan LaFors being active in the pocket, hard to sack. But to put it in perspective, they gave up 46 sacks last year. Miami, an undersized defense, but led by these two defensive ends, create havoc. Phil Smith with nine and a half sacks on the season. It's second down. And seven to go. Make that third. LaFleur is incomplete. Intended for Lionel Gates. And it'll be three and kick for Louisville on its first possession of the ball game. Here's a look at the linebackers. Perhaps the strength of this defense, Jones, Nande, and Beeson. Really athletic. Mark Terrell Jones, the middle linebacker, only five foot nine. I like these corners. They play a lot of bump and run coverage. Daryl Hunter, number 28, can fly. Interesting right here. We have a true freshman punt returner, second in the nation, Ryan Robinson. We also have a true freshman punter right here for Louisville. I think, Mark, they're going to try to kick this football away right here from Ryan Robinson. Brent Moody with an end-over-end punt. Robinson with a chance to return it and brought down 
Good special teams works by the Louisville Cardinals. Time for a break on the field and coming up, Rob Davis Football 101. You already saw it. It's the play action pass. Bob is in the lab breaking it down when we come back. ESPN 2's exclusive presentation of the 2003 GMAC Bowl. Folks, those pictures don't lie. The fireworks have begun in earnest as Ben Roethlisberger has set a MAC record for total yards in a season with 4,300, surpassing a guy you might know, Byron Leftwich. And the meter still running. First down and 10 for Miami, Ohio. Tyler in motion. Hand it off. And a big scene for Murray. Cal Murray. Cuts back. And finally tackled to the 28-yard line by Brett Johnson. A huge gain on the ground for the six-foot senior. Mark, they love the zone play, but they also love the power. Here, the second tight end is like the fullback out of a one-back set, and they pull the guard around number 74, Jacob Bell. So it's like an I-formation power play, but without the fullback, it's the second tight end, and Cal Murray... Wow, he just broke the ankles right there of number 25, Antoine Harris, in the open field. First down and 10. This is more than just a team that airs it out. They can run the ball well, too, as you just witnessed. Here's another play fake, and it works complete to Dan Tyler. And Tyler is inside the 10. It's going to be first and goal. Play action pass. Here's Bob Davey on Football 101. Miami has one of the best play action passing games in all of college football. First, they do it on running downs with running personnel in the game. Here out of a two tight end set. Second, Ben Roethlisberger is a great ball handler and really sells the run with his ball fakes. This play action freezes the safety and forces him to respect the run. When he realizes it's passed, it's too late and the wide receiver is in behind him. Mark, we just saw another form of the play action, the misdirection, using the tight end in the flat. This time they're going to run it to Murray, and he's brought down at the two-yard line. Mark, any time you can run the football. Now, not no one can run the football as successfully as they're running it right now. That's too good to be true. But any time you can run it, the play action passing game with a big, agile quarterback like Ben Roethlisberger, is a dynamic weapon so you're right they're an offense that can throw and they can run and the play action creates home runs for them it's going to be second down and goal murray behind roethlisberger tyler in motion it's murray touchdown miami ohio cal murray with the hot hand early in the ball game for head coach terry hepner His 12th rushing touchdown this season, the 23rd of his career for the aeronautics student. And uh, he wants to be a pilot while well, his team already taking flight, leading 13-0 with 9.07 to play in the first. Mark, and we mentioned Louisville having given up 45 points to Houston, 40 points to Cincinnati the last two weeks. Those records may be in jeopardy right now if this keeps up this pace. It is 14 to nothing. Barsegan with the extra point. Time now for the Louisville offense and LaFleur's to answer. Can they? They have to when we come back. Take a good look at number seven for Miami, guys, in the white uniform because this might be the last time you see him play in college football. Roethlisberger contemplating a move to the next level, professional football in the NFL. Once again, leading his team downfield to the score. They lead 14 to nothing. Murray with a couple of big plays, including the touchdown run. And now you have to think, Bob, that Louisville has to put some kind of response together. Well, Mark, Even if it's just moving the ball. Yeah, you're right. I mean, they've only had the ball three plays, and it was three and out. But Bobby Petrino came into this game thinking they could run the football on Miami. 
amazingly, he looks at the MAC conference like it's a finesse league, and there are a lot of spread offenses. He didn't feel like Miami had played against a physical offense since the Iowa game. The problem is they're down 14 nothing, and it's hard to be patient when you're down 14 nothing. But let's go back and take a look at the play that set up the touchdown for Miami. We, we talked about on Football 101, the deep play action where you freeze the safety. And you saw Ben Roethlisberger throw the ball in behind the safety. Here they work on the linebackers with the play action. Simply throw the football out in the flat to Dan Tyler, and he's wide open. So one form of play action, Mark, play action, throw the ball down the field. Another form of play action misdirection get the tight end on the flat with more of a rollout action by ben roethlisberger but what you like he can do it all and he's committed to great play action faking We've got something else for you bob but i've just been told that they may have done that roethlisberger may have done that without the aid of enhanced communication we've been told that the miami headsets are malfunctioning they are not working so that means that louisville cannot use theirs well it kind of shows you how overrated coaching is maybe <laughs> are you sure you want to say that and if i'm <laughs> miami right now keep the headsets out it cannot get any better than it is right now so let ben roethlisberger let it rip terry heckner is the mac coach of the year the fifth year head coach of miami ohio and he says that that uh, Coach of the Year award is really a misnomer. He credits his entire staff, and especially Shane Montgomery, his offensive coordinator, who has done terrific work with his quarterback. And meanwhile, his counterpart on the other side of the field, first-year head coach Bobby Petrino. His nine wins were the most ever by a first-year head coach in school history at Louisville. And uh, Louisville, meanwhile, playing in its sixth consecutive bowl game. And should have a lot of motivation. It doesn't look like it right now, but I think this football team was ready to play, Mark. Last year they got embarrassed by Marshall in this bowl game. They come in as a 14-point underdog. They thought that was a slap in the face coming in here representing Conference USA against the Mac. So all the time for talking and all that pregame motivation is over. They need to come down the field at least to keep the football away from Miami's offense. See what Robert Clark can do with it from his own seven. Clark has an alley. And Clark with a great return out to the 40-yard line, but there's a couple of flags down in the field at the 15-yard line and also at the 25-yard line on that 34-yard return by Clark. And Mark, obviously we're going to get a block in the back right here by Louisville, so now they're going to be faced with obviously poor field position here. This one going against the Cardinals. Louisville, a squad averaging over 35 points a game. It's time for them to get untracked offensively. And what Bobby Petrino does, Mark, interestingly, a lot of people script the first 10 plays of a game. Bobby Petrino scripts the first eight plays of each half. So right now, they've only used up three plays of that eight-play script. So they're still kind of trying to go on with the plan right here. Look at the last two games against Houston and Cincinnati, a total of 100 points There were two fouls on the, on the play. A block below the waist, which was declined. And the illegal block in the back will be penalized half the distance to the goal, and it's first down. Well, the fours does have an arsenal of weapons that it can use. Gates, Michael Bush, a talented true freshman. Eric Shelton back from injury. An all-conference tight end and Gent, but so far nothing to show after just three offensive plays. First down and ten from its own seven-yard line. Here come the Louisville Cardinals. Two tight ends and two wideouts, a single back. This is going to be Shelton, and Shelton is brought down near the 20-yard line. And for more, let's go downstairs to Holly Rowe. Well, guys, you're talking about that game plan where they script plays for Louisville. The coaches told us that they have a simple formula. It's called FTS, feed the stud. What they're focusing on is getting to the ball, the ball to wide receiver J.R. Russell. Also, their trio of great running backs and their tight end, Ronnie Jett. They say that they want to get the ball in their hands. That's how they'll be successful. I think they better start feeding them right now, guys, down 14 nothing. Yeah, it's time to get fed, Holly. Second down and seven from the 10-yard line. Mark and Holly's right. They do have a lot of offensive weapons on this football team. The four is back to pass. Has time. And he can also make something out of nothing. LaFours with a first down out to the 28-yard line. 
against Cincinnati. He broke one for a long run for a touchdown. Nande finally made the tackle, and there's a flag down on the play now late. But he does have a lot of elusiveness. Mark, you're right. He was an all-state defensive back out of Baton Rouge, Louisiana. And right here, he tucks the football. Miami playing some man underneath coverage. There's a pretty good void in there. And he takes off and run, runs with it. Just wait and see what this penalty is. A personal foul on the offense. A personal foul on the defense. They offset. It's a first down. Those are the ball at the 29-yard line. That's their first first down of the ball game. Interesting as we look at Stefan LaForge, Mark, not really recruited out of Baton Rouge, had one scholarship. It was an academic scholarship to Louisiana Lafayette. Sent his tape to John L. Smith, who was head coach at Louisville. Great decision by John L. This kid's a good football player. First down and 10, he hands it off. And it's the reverse to Haskins. The Red Hawks stayed home on defense. Nowhere to go for Robert Haskins. The 5'6 sophomore brought down. It's going to be a loss of about, well, maybe about five yards on the play. And Mark Robert Haskins took a reverse 64 yards against Houston. And right here, close to being a clip right there. Fortunate to get this football back, really, to where it's only about an eight-yard loss. So Louisville... Not really characteristic of them right now. You see a little bit of panic, Mark. Down 14-0. This really is a ball control running style offense. Second down and long. 17 to go. This is the Louisville team that has faced a lot of adversity. Some of it coming off the field late in the season. Michael Bush, the true freshman, knocked out of bounds at the 24-yard line. Third down coming up now. And... Uh, we have an interesting feature that we're going to be using throughout the course of the evening. The red line will be used on third down to determine the and demark the line of scrimmage. I'm going to highlight the line of scrimmage in red. This will give you an opportunity to keep the line in focus throughout the play as quarterbacks roll out of the pocket when players develop well behind the line of scrimmage and to better appreciate who's winning the battle up front. And Mark, something else I think you'll see how the defensive linemen crowd that line of scrimmage and those offensive linemen are back off that ball a little bit trying to create space for pass protection. LaForce incomplete at the 30-yard line intended for Josh Tinch. And it's fourth down, they'll have to punt. Bob, I alluded to some of the controversy that Louisville has faced late in the season. Their head coach, Bobby Petrino, interviewed clandestinely with Auburn officials for the head coaching job that Tommy Tuberville still holds to this moment. Initially, both sides denied there was such a meeting. Then it came out in the wash that there was a meeting. He came back to his team, tried to win back their confidence. They did respond with a win subsequently against Cincinnati. But that still kind of lingers in the minds of some. Moody on the punt. And it's fielded at the 38-yard line. Mark, I think we would get a call here against Louisville for interfering with the punt returner. Or it may have been an illegal fair catch signal by the punt returner, Ryan Robinson. The player was blocked into the runner. No foul. There it is. We're going to get a chance to see this right here. Ryan Robinson signals for the fair catch. And right there, you do see that the Louisville player is blocked in to the line of vision right there. Josh Minkins, number five from Louisville. Oh my so Miami probably o mark a good no call right there by the officials. Yeah, Miami, Ohio now is scored on both its possessions. This is their third offensive possession of the game. Roethlisberger gets rid of it and throws a dart complete at the 48-yard line to Mike Larkin. He's already had a touchdown catch tonight. Well, Monday at 5.30 Eastern on ESPN, it's the Mazda Tangerine Bowl. Senior quarterback 
Phillip Rivers leads North Carolina State against Kansas. The Jayhawks, hey, making their first bowl appearance since 1995. Coverage beginning with College Game Day presented by Outback Steakhouse at 5 Eastern. It's all part of Capital One Bowl Week on ESPN and ESPN2. This just, uh, just the appetizer along with the New Orleans Bowl a couple of nights ago. A terrific time of the year for college football. First down and 10, Roethlisberger, a picture-perfect 6-for-6. Six six. Mike Smith in a tailback, a little counter to Smith. And he gains about five yards. Mark, you talk about that Bobby Petrino situation with Auburn and the talk that he had. Uh, you know, one thing you learn now, nothing is under the radar. You think? <laughs> and as a football coach, I always talk to our football team, and I think it's a good message for coaches. Whatever you do, you're accountable for your actions, and you better envision it being on the front sports page of USA Today, tomorrow, or Sports Center tonight, or the internet immediately. So obviously it was a mistake was made. Good people do make mistakes. I think that incident is behind you, and I think it can be a valuable lesson, not only for Bobby, but for the football team. Snap is somewhat mishandled by Roethlisberger. Downfield and incomplete. He was looking Nance's way. And it'll be third down and long. And uh, That was his first incompletion. Third and about five to go now for the Red Hawks. And really, Mark, the, excuse me, the first time Miami's offense has been challenged right here on this third down and six. And Louisville with some communication problems. They're going to go ahead and looks like here and play a three-man front, something they have not done any of this year, but they've practiced it the last three or four weeks. The best pass rusher, Marcus Jones, out of the ballgame on the sidelines. Roethlisberger with time. With a move and a first down. Complete at the 36 to Mike Larkin. So the roommates hook up once again. Larkin, a three-year starter, already with a touchdown catch. First and 10, Miami, Ohio. And let's take a look, Mark, at the red line we're using here on third down. I think this is a huge thing for fans at home to look at on third down when you have a quarterback like Ben Roethlisberger that scrambles. Here you see him scramble towards the line of scrimmage. He stays alive, obviously behind the line of scrimmage. But once again, Mike Larkin, after the play breaks down, really kind of a controlled, coached scramble situation again. Out of the shotgun. They'll work out of the shotgun about 60% of the time. This is Murray. Murray with a couple of big runs already this evening. Down to the 29 where Kerry Rhodes makes the stop. Mark, I know it's early in this football game, but if you're Louisville, it's time to line up and come after him. You cannot just sit back like this. I mean, there are craters in there You start on selling this out running pressure game. already? I do, because if you don't, this football game is going to be over. Louisville's defense has been somewhat porous in the last two games. Second down and four. A statement game for not only Miami, Ohio, but also for the Mac. And Mark, continue to look at confusion on Louisville's part on defense. They seem to be late getting lined up. Roethlisberger makes them pay over the middle. Complete to Martin Nance at the 22-yard line. Martin Nance, a big target at 6'4", 219 pounds. Had a breakout game early in the year against Northwestern. And Mark, last year he only caught 10 passes all year. This is his 82nd catch this year. So a breakout season for Martin Nance. And you mentioned it, six foot four, 190 pounds. He's a great looking athlete. First down and 10. Mike Smith in a tailback. Louisville looking for answers defensively. This is Smith. Smith down to the 11-yard line. Brought down once again by Kerry Rhodes. We've seen a steady diet now of uh, Murray and Smith in the backfield. Uh, Smith, a touchdown machine who almost transferred to Youngstown State at the end of last year to be closer to his ailing mother, but decided to come back, and he was welcomed back with open arms by Coach Hepner and the rest of his staff. And Mark, players step up. We mentioned a second ago, Martin Nance with only 10 catches this year, 82. Michael Smith only 68 yards last year, about 730 yards this year. So you've had players step up for Miami. First down and 10, Roethlisberger into the end zone. Touchdown, Nance. 
more of the same. Nance, Roethlisberger, Larkin, Murray, and it's all good for the Red Hawks. Oxford, Ohio, and Miami are in the house. And some people, the only question about Ben Roethlisberger has been the quickness of his release right here. I think he unloads this football on the snap. So anybody that's saying Ben Roethlisberger doesn't have a very quick release, Mark, I don't think that's accurate because he unloaded <laughs> that football on that, on that slant right there. Folks, you can believe the hype because it's not hype. Roethlisberger already with a couple of touchdown passes tonight. Adding to his gaudy numbers. The extra point is good. The Red Hawks lead 21-0. And uh, let's go downstairs. To, actually, we're going to stay right here. And uh, coming up next, we'll tell you why Roethlisberger came to Miami and what role Marshall's Chad Pennington had in that decision. More on that when we come back. Miami, Ohio with the nation's longest winning streak of 12 games. They haven't lost since the first week of the season against Iowa. 21-0 in this overhead view of Mobile, Alabama and Lad People Stadium. Courtesy of the Saturn Lightship. Keep your eye on the sky when Saturn Lightship visits a major event near you. And uh, Baba, I think you and I should have went up in that thing for a little spin. Oh, we were invited. Hindsight. You are <laughs> saying that today when we received the invitation to go up in that thing. <laughs> But Mark, you talk about national television, why there's parity in college football. Another reason, this is Miami's 10th game on television this year, fifth nationally televised game, and they're a max school. Another reason for parity, everybody's on television. Clark brought down to the 13, and let's go downstairs to Holly Rowe. Guys, we are here with Eric Feldstein, the president and chairman of GMAC. And Eric, why is it important for GMAC to be involved in an event like this? GMAC is thrilled to sponsor this event. It's great football, it's great fun. But for GMAC, this has become much more than just a football game. Uh, this has become our community outreach program. We've invited 2,500 young kids as our guests, GMAC guests, to this event. Uh, it's extended into summer camps for fatherless kids. We offer some of these boys scholarships, learning centers during the year. Um, this is our way of giving something back to the community. I know that you've extended your agreement until 2006, and uh, we'll get it back upstairs in a minute, but why is it important for you to continue that involvement in college football? Well, again, this is our way of giving something back. We are committed until 2006. I should thank the city of Mobile for the hospitality. It's great to be here. Thank you, Mobile, for letting us put our name on your bowl. It's been great. We're proud to be a part of it. All right, thanks very much. Eric Felstein, chairman and president of GMAC with his sons, Max and Sam. Thank you, Holly. Yeah, thanks a lot, Holly. You know, they have done some wonderful things here in Mobile with this bomb. Some of the scholarships that they've given out to young children here. A wonderfully magnanimous gesture. First down and 10 after the nice run by Gates. Screen pass. Gates again out near the 40-yard line. Actually, that's Smith who's in the ball game. So we've seen four different backs for the Cardinals now touch the ball with 2.50 to go in the first period. But still no points on the board for the Cardinals. Mark, getting back to Holly's interview there, you know, everybody wants to beat up the BCS system. Everybody says there's too many bowls. We should have a playoff. All you have to do is come to a city like Mobile, see how this city embraces this whole bowl festivity week. I don't think there's too many bowl games. I think this is great for this community and great for these two teams, or maybe one of these teams so far in this game. Yeah, well said, and uh, that was Lionel Gates out to the 42-yard line. It'll be third down and short for Louisville. A wonderful banquet they had a couple of days ago, about 3,000 people attending. Uh, exactly. Good time meeting the, and, uh, meeting the mayor. And the reality, if there was a playoff system, these two teams wouldn't be here. Maybe Miami of Ohio would be here. But all you have to do is also look at the New Orleans Bowl the other night when Memphis won that football right. game. The look on those fans' faces and those players' faces, you'd have thought they won a national championship. So I think it's good to spread it around. And it's a great start on next year. LaFleur's will be back next year for the Cardinals. And a first down run by LaForce. And a flag at midfield thrown late on the play. Stephon LaForce is very impressive running the football. Led the conference in total yards per game. That's going to be against Miami. Attack some more yardage, John. 
First year starter trying to bring his team back into this contest, trailing by three touchdowns. And Mark trying to do it with Riding his the legs. Face mask by the defense. Five yards, first down. We're going to get a chance right here to look at the face mask. Almost looked like a little bit of simultaneous face mask as Stephon LaForge used the stiff on, but they got Alfonso Hodge, number nine, on the call. First down and 10 as a result at the 44-yard line. This is their best field position of the night. Michael Bush now in at running back. And this is Bush, Kentucky's Mr. Football last year, the true freshman down to the 39-yard line. Well, Saturday, ESPN celebrates its 200th NFL telecast. Tom Brady and the Patriots look to secure home field advantage through the playoffs. Saturday, they face the New York Jets, their division rivals. This game kicks off ESPN's double coverage weekend. Patriots-Jets Sunday night at 8.30 Eastern. Also available in high definition on ESPN HD. It all starts with NFL primetime presented by Miller Lite at 8 p.m. Eastern time. What have the Patriots won 12 games in a row now, Mark? Red hot. That's a good news. 10. 10 games, but everyone wants to hire their coordinators, coordinators now. You lose all your coaches. Up top, LaFleur is a flag on the play and a catch made by Russell. He was working on Alfonso Hodge. The two players jostling, running down the sidelines. And it's going to go against Louisville. We mentioned, me, Miami. we mentioned Miami plays a bunch of bump and run. Here's Alfonso Hodge. They really play a bump alignment, but they bail out of there. A little bit of pushing and shoving there. What do you think, Mark? On the defense. 15 yards penalty. Was against the defense. Automatic first down. But these corners <laughs> from Miami, Miami does something interesting. They play a lot of quarters coverage with the safeties. We see a lot of that every week in college football. But instead of playing the corners off at about seven yards, they play those corners right up there, nose to nose, on the wide receivers. And they've got a great corner right here in Daryl Hunter. This guy can fly. He's a 4 2 8 40 mark. Fastest player ever at Miami. But you're going to see bump and run coverage all night and they use that Deion Sanders stance you can see that staggered stance up there right now matched up on Clark they run the ball number 23 Lionel Gates back in the ball game brought down by Matt Pusateri Louisville trailing 21 nothing needing to move the ball and so far they have moved the ball well on this drive aided mind you by a couple of penalties against Miami but you see Louisville's plan, Mark, of trying to run the football. Louisville, a lot of two-back sets, which Miami of Ohio sees very little of. It's kind of back to the future you see right here with eye back. So not used to playing this power running game, Miami of Ohio. The give is once again to Gates. Out of the eye, a little bit of power football, first down. At the 13-yard line, the Louisville Cardinals out of Conference USA. The last two consecutive games, putting up over 100 points on the boards, coming in at 9-3 and three overall, and uh, trying to defend the pride of the conference. Miami, Ohio, meanwhile, out of the MAC, and what a year it has been for that conference, as well as perhaps the best quarterback in all of college football. So far, the GMAC Bowl has been all B-E-N, Roethlisberger. Back with more second quarter action after this. Welcome back, everyone, to Mobile, Alabama, and Lad People Stadium in the port city of Mobile. And right now, Miami, Ohio, leading 21 0 as we get ready for the start of the second period and a beautiful portrait of success being painted so far by the Red Hawks. And uh, got a couple of artists doing their thing on the sidelines, too. It'll be first down and 10 for Louisville, though, from the Red Hawks 13 yard line. And at a time when they needed to respond by moving the ball offensively, Bob, they've done just that here. They have, Mark, in first, ten, first quarter statistics, Miami with 226 yards total offense. The Louisville's 73, but Louisville is running the football a little bit, which means play-action pass becomes a factor now. I haven't heard offensively from Gent. And here he is, the big all-conference tight end all the way down to the one-yard line. His first reception of the ball game, Jen, who has made all-conference 
in four consecutive seasons, although his numbers have been a little bit subpar this year. And Mark, this is a good-looking tight end. As we look at Louisville's play action right here, it looks like run, and then you're going to see the tight end work his way back out to the flat right here, Ronnie Gent. He's had some injuries, some knee problems, but this is a big, talented guy. Brought back from two different surgical procedures, giving his team first down and goal right here. Louisville trying to punch it in. Coming up short, Lionel Gates. And it'll be second down and goal. Charge led by John Glavin up front for the Red Hawks. And this Miami defense mark number one in the MAC conference in all categories. So you talk about balanced offenses sometimes. This is a balanced defense. It's hard to be number one in every single category. Ten play of the drive coming up. Once again, touchdown. This time Gates gets in. And the Cardinals are on the board. And right here, Mark, just simple eye formation. They hand the ball to Gates. A little bit of a cutback right there. And a good drive by Louisville under some adverse conditions. But you see, they can run the football. They started that drive on the 15-yard line. And, Mark, if they can run it, it's going to open up that play-action passing game. You would think that they can't fall behind by too much in order to run that ball. An impressive drive by the Cardinals, now trailing by 14 points. Gates with his 11th rushing touchdown this season, the 13th of his career. Timeout on the field. Miami of Ohio known as the cradle of coaches, but it could also be known as the cradle of U.S. presidents. Yes, that's right. More on that when we come back. Louisville proving to be up to the challenge, responding with a touchdown, trailing by 14 points right now. And uh, Lionel Gates was the key contributor with the one-yard touchdown run. Eight rushes, two passes on that drive, using a little over four minutes on the clock. Louisville with eight seniors in the lineup today are uh, graduating actually tonight. Their class walking tonight at 6.30 local time. So that underway. These guys uh, trying to matriculate in another sense. And here's the kick. One coming up a little bit short. It's Smith. And Smith is brought down near the 20-yard line. Well, Miami has long been known as the cradle of coaches. Some of the great coaches in football history have served at Miami, Ohio in Oxford. Uh, Paul Brown played there in 1928-29. Weep Eubank. Uh, Woody Hayes was a head coach, 49 to 50. Bo Schembechler played there, 49 to 50, before becoming the head coach from 63 to 68. And uh, Eric Parsegan was a player and assistant coach before taking over the helm from 51 to 55. And there's a look at some of the greats in football, period. And we had a chance to see Bo Schembechler this morning. Crashed right? our production meeting. Telling huh? us about <laughs> playing in the salad bowl back in Phoenix, Arizona when he was an offensive tackle. Yeah, defeating Arizona State, and here's Roethlisberger on the run. Well, Miami, Ohio also has a history of influencing the development of a U.S. president. Yes, Marvin Monk Pierce played football at Miami of Ohio from 1913 to 1915. There he is. Uh, he was the father of Barbara Pierce Bush and the grandfather of current president George W. Bush. Pierce was a four-sport standout at Miami. Football, basketball, baseball, and tennis. Well-rounded. Yeah, he was inducted into the Miami Hall of Fame in 1972. we got to get to Oxford, Mississippi. Uh, Miss uh, Oxford, Ohio a little bit more. Second down and four. They're excited now with their team leading 21-7, but a big defensive play on Murray made by Rob Day. Mark, that is the first time tonight that we've seen Louisville stay at home on that backside cutback play. And Rod Day right there, 6'1", 220-pound senior, stepped up and made a play. They've got another opportunity right here, third down and seven, to try to get off the field. This time it looks like they're going with a four-man rush, Mark. Roethlisberger for the first time facing a little bit of adversity in this ball game. And we have a flag down on the far side of the field at the 40. 
Dead foul, delay of game on the offense. Penalty is five yards, still third down. This is a huge third down, Mark, obviously, as we look at Miami's first three possessions. It doesn't get any better in that offensively, but momentum and, more importantly, confidence right here for this Louisville defense. Just get off the field on third down and 13. Three receivers out to the right of Roethlisberger. Rares back, completes it up at the 32-yard line to Mike Larkin. But it is short of the first down, so... Louisville's defense responding in earnest. Mark, you're going to see Ben Roethlisberger step up under pressure right here. Excellent throw to Michael Larkin, his roommate, on third down. And it is a first down right there for Miami. I stand corrected. But excellent job. I mean, when you're 245 pounds and they're bringing those safety blitzes and those safeties weigh 185, that's why you stand in there. This is Smith, and Smith is swarm near the line of scrimmage. Let's go downstairs to Holly for more on the cradle of coaches. Well, guys, I was talking with Miami coach Terry Hepner before the game. I said, do any of these old coaches come and meddle at all? And he said, well, they don't really meddle. But uh, as you know, Bo Schemblecker is there. He actually called the first play of the game for Miami tonight. I would have thought about 99.9% .9 it would be run, but believe it or not, even he recognizes great talent in Ben Roethlisberger, and he called a pass play. Bo Schembecker told the coach that he has never seen a player throw better on the run than Ben Roethlisberger, so two thumbs up from the coaches. That's a pretty good endorsement. Pass complete to Martin Nance with room, and a downfield block. Nance, Martin Nance, down to the 23-yard line, first down and 10, Miami, Ohio. Finally brought down by Antoine Harris. Louisville, Mark, tried to blitz them. They end up in man-to-man -man coverage with Antoine Harris on Nance. And right here, tackling is just as important in man-to-man -man coverage as coverage is. Because when it's man-to-man, -man, everybody's chasing the receivers all over the field. And when you miss a tackle, there's no one left. Roethlisberger has just set a MAC record for passing yards in a season. 42-97 and still counting. This is Smith. Rested out of bounds at the 15-yard line. And uh, Ben Roethlisberger uh, was recruited by some of the big schools in the central part of the country, a couple of Big Ten schools, but he decided to go to Miami, Ohio for several different reasons. That conference enjoying a lot of success, sending some quarterbacks recently to the National Football League. Mark, he told me he wanted to go to Miami for two reasons. Number one, he felt he could play early, and he really liked the head football coach at Miami. Those two reasons. Shane Montgomery doing a great job working with him as offensive coordinator and quarterback's coach. Roethlisberger under duress. Making it happen. Touchdown! Mark, what NFL team do you think is going to have the first pick in this draft <laughs> next year? His proud parents watching on as he completes the pass to Matt Brent for the touchdown. Mark, I think this play right here probably says it all. You're going to see number one, play action fake. Second thing, you're going to see escapability and strength. The third thing you're going to see is keeps awareness while running and finds his tight end, number 87, Matt Brandt, in the end zone. Again, a major, major part of their offense. What do you do when Ben Roethlisberger scrambles? You find the open area. That was probably a 10 or 12 second play right there. That's when he makes a lot of the magic happen. Brandt, meanwhile, with his seventh touchdown reception of the season, the ninth of his career. Roethlisberger said, I keep having to prove myself. Well, someday he might not have to. We'll be right back with more after this. ESPN 2's exclusive presentation of the 2003 GMAC Bowl. Huh. Part of the colors and pageantry here of the GMAC Bowl. I'm Ohio leading 28-7. This is Clark. 
Let's it bounce into the end zone, and the Cardinals will start off on their own 20-yard line. One more look at the touchdown catch. And was it a catch by Matt Brandt? Well, first of all, I love this big tight end, Matt Brandt, from up in your territory, Canada, Mark. And right here, you're going to see him in the corner of the end zone. I think this is definitely a catch. He has possession. The knee was down. The ground cannot cause a fumble. So I think an excellent call right there by the officials. That was obviously a catch. Well, uh, Ken and Brenda Roethlisberger right there watching a clinic right now by their son. And his sister, I found out, a ninth grader, an outstanding volleyball player. They've got to get back right after the game because she has a volleyball game uh, Saturday afternoon, I believe. LaFours completes the pass on the receiver's screen to Clark. Let's take a look at Ken and Brenda's reaction on the touchdown. I think they've done that about... Uh, well, you can times tell who the today. real fan is. The dad is worried right now. Is it a catch? Did the ground <laughs> cause the fumble? See, mom, right away, it was a touchdown to the mom. But the dad, he's watched a few more ball games. A little more probably. analytical, maybe. He was waiting just, to see. Just maybe. Second down and nine after that completion. We go ran the ball well on their last drive. They run it again now, inside handoff. That's Michael Bush, the true freshman. Interesting story, Michael Bush, speaking of quarterbacks like Roethlisberger. Bush fancies himself as a quarterback, also as a wide receiver, also as a tailback. One of the most highly recruited players in the country, Michael Bush, a big left-handed quarterback. He better push himself away from that training table, <laughs> Mark, if he wants to stay a quarterback, because I saw him. He's heading toward 245, 250 Remind pounds. you a little bit of uh, Michael Robinson a little bit at uh, Penn State, huh? Yeah, a little bit bigger than Michael Robinson. Third down and five, LaFours. Under some heat and sacked. Back at the 23-yard line and hit hard. Going to be fourth down. Good rush by John Glavin and Will Stanley coming off the edge. Stanley with seven and a half sacks coming into the ball game. And Will Stanley, number 49, a little bit undersized, Mark. You're going to see him right here. Just continue with effort right there. That's a good lick. But Will Stanley, a little bit undersized, 6'1", 244, was a fullback until the spring practice of last year converted over in his first play as a defensive end this year against Iowa sack Nathan Chandler Bob that was just the 11th sack given up all year by Louisville they're going to try and kick it away from Robinson it almost hit a Miami player in the back Robinson feels it at the 33 and is brought down right there at the 34 yard line one yard return on a 45 yard punt out of the Mac and what a year it's been for that conference with huge wins Huge numbers being put up by Roethlisberger, 12 of 13, and more in just a minute. Miami leading 28-7 in the GMAC Bowl, the fifth edition. GMAC stands for Great Movement and Completions by Ben Roethlisberger. The play action working like a charm. This one to Nance, one of many so far. And showing great escapability in the pocket to a wide open Larkin for the first touchdown then downfield into the end zone once again to Nance wait a second did I hear you right GMAC great movement, movement and, and completions did you just come up with it hey, things happen like that it's been a magical night when you're around number seven back there the former point guard in high school oh, incomplete one of his few incompletions on the night and for more, let's go downstairs to Holly Rowe. Guys, when Miami coach Terry Hefner recruited Ben Roethlisberger, he went to his home with a newspaper clipping of Marshall quarterback Chad Pennington. Pennington was on his way that very night to the Heisman Trophy presentation in New York as a finalist. He said, Ben, if you come to Miami, you can be the next Chad Pennington. And he has. What he has done has been undisputed, one of the best performances in MAC history, as you can see by him setting the record tonight. Now this guy is impressive big time second down and 10. Murray slips down trying to make a cut at the 38 yard line and Roethlisberger in some very impressive company. Detmer Pennington just mentioned Rattay Kingsbury out of Texas Tech and Roethlisberger and Roethlisberger had an interesting point brought it up to me in the lobby of the hotel earlier today he says you know people think we're we're Texas Tech we just sling the ball and throw we're not like that we're a little bit more balanced. I agree Mark and you love his ball handling 
ball skill capabilities. No, he was a point guard in basketball, a shortstop in baseball. So he's not a big guy that was a power forward in the first baseman. This guy's an athletic guy, and that's what I love about him. Grew four inches and put on 40 pounds since coming to Miami. Murray got to the edge and a flag down at the 48-yard line. He was collared there. That time they used Roethlisberger on the option. So another different look from the quarterback. Well, Mark, if any NFL teams are thinking about putting a little speed or zone option in, <laughs> this is another part of the package right here of Ben Roethlisberger. You're going to see them come down the line right here, pitch the football, takes play, it to the defensive end. Rushes from the defense, hitting a player out of bounds. 15-yard penalty and an automatic first down. Looks like it was Marcus Jones, number 56, the perpetrator. And, Mark, you see him audibilizing right there. He got the look. They were in man-to-man -man coverage with a soft corner, pitched the football out, and Marcus Jones obviously with a frustration penalty over on that sidelines. Moves the ball all the way down to the 36-yard line. 7.25 to go in the first half. Miami in control. Roethlisberger complete to Nance at the 26-yard line. And speaking of great quarterbacks, Philip Rivers in North Carolina State. Will Pack take on Kansas Monday at 5.30 Eastern on ESPN in the Mazda Tangerine Bowl. Coverage beginning with College Game Day presented by Outback Steakhouse at 5 p.m. Eastern. It's all part of Capital One Bowl Week on ESPN and ESPN2. And Mark Louisville. This game, obviously, if it's not out of hand already, can get out of hand quickly here. But a huge game because 15 players from Alabama, 26 for Florida. It's not just about this game. It's about recruiting down here. Roethlisberger going up top into the end zone. Touchdown. Larkin with his second of the night. That time he victimized Josh Minkins. Ben Roethlisberger perhaps playing in his last college football game for Miami, Ohio. A NFL prospect perhaps could be, as I'm told by one NFL personnel per person, that uh, could be the first quarterback taken. Mark, I've been out at a lot of practices where you don't tackle. I think Louisville still thinks it's practice and it's kind of a pass skeleton drill. And not, not to be sarcastic, but this is not very good defense good we're seeing right tackle. now. Well, today's AFLAC trivia question. The GMAC Bowl breaks a streak of 16 years without going to a bowl game for Miami. What team broke a longer bowl drought this season? Ponder that. Ben Roethlisberger proves, Mark, he can also throw the slant and go right here. It looks like slant. He gives a little ball fake. Minkus is going to jump on the slant, and then it's going to be a slant and go in behind him. Josh Minkins looking in the backfield. And paid the price for it. Here's the return by Clark, and Clark beyond the 10 down to the 12-yard line. And once again, Louisville not starting an auspicious field position and mark i want to make one more point this is what i love about college football watch larkin after he makes a play he doesn't run over and look for a cell phone he doesn't look for a <laughs> Who sharpie would you be talking about listen to me maybe i'm old-fashioned maybe you but are watching guys are. making plays <laughs> is enough entertainment for me and you know the next thing that's going to happen in the nfl they ought to charge those guys for advertising during the game because all it is is self-promotion. They should make those NFL guys pay for advertising. But also all they're doing, they're selling their own product. I'm, I'm going to pick that up with you in just a minute. I got something to say, too. This is Gates, a gain of about three yards. And, of course, one form is more about sportsmanship, perhaps, here, as opposed to maybe entertainment in the professional ranks. Of course, it would be a little more entertaining if Louisville... Uh, for them, let me just finish. This. I got no problem with the cell phone. I think I'm talking to Michael Irvin right now with where you're coming from. I got no problem with the cell phone. Let me say phone. this. What happens between those white lines, guys making plays? Isn't that enough entertainment?
It's not the WWF or WWL, whatever that wrestling yeah. league is. I just don't see where it's belittling your opponent. Well, it's about self-promotion, though. Make those guys buy the airtime and pay for advertising if they're going to do that. There's a little airtime for Louisville. Look for us. Complete at the 30-yard line to J.R. Russell, the longest hookup of the ball game. That's what they've been waiting for. He got in behind the secondary. And number 28, Daryl Hunter. That's their home run hitter, J.R. Russell. And J.R. Russell learned from Deion Branch, the talented receiver for the New England Patriots when he was at Louisville. Stephon LaFour steps up and shows his arm strength. And right here, you're going to see a little stutter and go right here by J.R. Russell. And that is a great throw in behind the safety number 36, Steve Burke. Great arm strength, Mark Stephon LaFour. Now they run out of the offset eye. Bush, a backup quarterback, has a man. Touchdown, J.O. Russell. Michael Bush, the former high school quarterback, threw a completion on a dart. And Mark, you remember a couple years ago, East Carolina up 38 to 7, I believe. 38 to 8. Came back. There's some magic in this GMAC bowl now. A lot of weapons on that field. A total of 48 points already on the evening. Russell with the touchdown catch, the sixth of the season for him. They are Russell, a wonderful reclamation project. A guy who the last coaching staff, John O. Smith, and his guys were down on for a couple of years, but this year under head coach Bobby Petrino has made a wonderful resurrection. And big Michael Bush, the highly recruited left-hand quarterback out of Louisville. Right here, he's going to set up to throw the football. A little bit of hesitation. He unloads it. And Matt Pusateri, the strong safety, J.R. Russell with better ball skills right there. Kind of an underthrown fade. And Louisville responds again. But you know what, Mark? They have to respond at some point on defense. Bob, we were talking about Michael Bush, how he fancies himself as a quarterback still. He threw a pretty nice ball. Well, a don't quarterback add any ball. more fuel to that fire. <laughs> Bobby Petrino really wants him to be a running back. They're going to have a discussion in the spring. He's going to let him compete for that job next year. But any which way he touches the ball, things happen when number 19 gets his hands on it. But you do see the playmaking ability of Louisville. Once again, they come into this game averaging almost seven yards a play. Miami playing in its first bowl game since 1986. Right now leading 35-14. The return at the 19-yard line, it's Ryan Red. Let's go back to 1986, their last bowl game in the California Bowl against San Jose State. They scored once on Terry Morris's touchdown pass, then San Jose State racked up 426 yards and 37 points. Miami turned the ball over six times and eventually lost the game 37-7. to Looking for a win. And speaking of celebrating, Bob, what about that little stuff, huh? That was a little uh, you were just Coast. talking about. That was our West Coast stuff right there. No cell phones, but a lot of a lot of soul and funk on that shake. That was the last time that the Red Hawks, back in the day, called the Redskins. And that's going to be against Miami. Terry Hepner, the MAC Conference Coach of the Year, and his philosophy, an old Bear Bryant philosophy, have a plan, work the plan, and plan for the unexpected. And one of their After goals the play, is here. Unnecessary roughness on the receiving team. The penalty is half the distance to the goal, and it's first down. Bob, one of their goals this year, actually a couple of them, was one, to win the MAC, and two, play 14 games. And that's what they've done here this season. Well, it's been an incredible season to run off 12 straight wins after losing to Iowa on the road in the first football game. And they are a good football team, Mark. No question about it. Back against Conference USA and a fumble on the snap. Roethlisberger falls back on the loose ball. And back to our Aflac trivia question. The GMAC Bowl, pardon me, the GMAC Bowl breaks a streak of 16 years. 
without going to a bowl game for Miami. What team broke a longer bowl drought this season? Bamba. I got to admit, I came up dry in this one. In the production meeting, Bo Garrett, our producer, refused to give us the answer. Did you know it? Memphis. I knew it. I knew 31. it. In fact, we were sitting out having dinner the other evening watching that Memphis game. And when Memphis beat North Texas in New Orleans, bowling that big celebration when they carried Tommy West off the field. I think that's their first bowl win in 20 years. Roethlisberger going up top complete to the 25, out to the 30-yard line. His go-to guy, Martin Nance, working on Josh Minkins. And they're going to move the ball out near the 30. And a first down for the Red Hawks. We're going to see Nance again right here. A little stutter corner move. Completely turns Josh Minkins number five around. Now Josh Minkins playing off. And really it's just stealing right there on those short routes by Martin Nance. Bob, he was so far off and it was like Nance had the flu. He didn't want to get near him. <laughs> and speaking of the flu, that's uh, something that some Louisville players, about a couple dozen, have been stricken with this week. Roethlisberger on the run. And brought down at the 29-yard line, brought down hard by Robert McCoon, a local product from Mobile, Alabama, the top tackler on that defensive unit for the Cardinals. And you're going to see the closing, closing speed right here of Robert McCoon. Keep in mind, this is 6'5", 245 pounds right here, scrambling with that football. And here comes McCoon right there, great closing speed. Number one tackler on the team, Mark, from right here in Mobile, Alabama. Yeah, great story, Bob. 23 years old, served in the military for a few years in Korea and Kuwait. Mike Smith now in a tailback. Louisville coming with the blitz, Mark, right Mike here. Smith over the left side, brought down to the 32 by Brett Johnson. We're here at Lad People Stadium in Mobile, Alabama, the port city. Number 15 in Miami, Ohio, leading Louisville right now in the GMAC Bowl. I'm Mark Jones, along with Bob Davey, Holly Rowe down to the field, and season's greetings from all of us at ESPN to all of you at home. And uh, what a season it's been for Ben Roethlisberger. They lost their first game of the season against Iowa. He had four interceptions in that game. Only two of them were really his fault. But since that point, he has been picture perfect. Third down and nine now for the Red Hawks. Here's the play action. Great move on McCune. And a completion to Nance at the 43. Wow, those two, that duel, unstoppable and right now. Mark, when do you ever see on third down and nine play action pass on third and nine? They fake the run, but this guy is so good on the run, and the misdirection causes the defense tough angles to cover. That's a great throw and catch right there. Great concentration again by Martin Nance, but play action on third and nine shows you how much confidence they have in him throwing on the run. First down and 10. Handed off to Smith, and Smith is brought down at the line of scrimmage at the 42 by Brett Johnson. Downstairs to Holly. Well, guys, one of the ways that Ben Roethlisberger was able to develop his play action is by copying what Chad Pennington did. He read in that newspaper article he told you about earlier that Chad Pennington used to watch film of himself handing the football off. He would then copy that film for the play action so that that ball fake handoff would look exactly the same as his regular handoffs. Ben likes that advice, and he's done the same thing. Terry Hepner says he watches film of himself to duplicate it just right. Yeah, Bob, as you mentioned in our production meeting, really a lost art right now at the quarterback spot. Second down and 10, and they blow this dead. Speaking of play action, here's what Ben Roethlisberger had to say about it. When you play action fake, I think a lot of times when you have a threat of, of such a good running backs and such a good lineman making holes, uh, the DBs get sucked down sometimes or, you know, they overplay one side or the other. And uh, like I said, when, you, when you've got playmakers on the outside, I say anytime Martin Nance is, is stride for stride with the DB, I'm throwing it to him because he's going to make a play. Well, they've made several plays. It's working tonight. You saw the big numbers being put up not only by Roethlisberger, but Nance with over 150 yards receiving already in the first half with one and a half minutes to go. Mark Louisville looks like they're in straight man-to-man -man blitz coverage right here. Here they come. Looked like they tried to set up the screen, but Cal Murray slipped, and uh, Chris Fowler tells what's coming up at halftime. 
Well, Trevor Alberts and Mark May join me. We'll preview some bowl games. Another good quarterback showcase coming up for Philip Rivers. That's next on the bowl schedule. And Chris, we'll try to figure out this meltdown by Louisville tonight. But we'll also talk, Mark, about senior quarterbacks and where maybe Ben Roethlisberger fits into that mix. You may have noticed my tie. It's a tribute to Notre Dame. Guess what? They have a new television contract. I'll tell you more about it at halftime. Good planning. All right. All that coming up uh, at the break, guys. All right, guys. Uh third down and long 15 to go and mark here's the problem if louisville maximum defends as they do here three-man rush ben roethlisberger a lot of time to scramble sure around does. and wait for open receivers roethlisberger incomplete intended for larkin and they'll have to punt for one of the few times tonight antoine harris number 25 closing quickly from his corner spot it's fourth and 15 and now the loneliest guy on the field they're not bringing the punter in. Ben Roethlisberger, actually an excellent pooch punter right here. But I was going to talk about Mike Wafsing, number 16, the punter. He's only punted 30 times all year. Heck, he may not even let her. Yeah. Look for Ben Roethlisberger right here to drop back and punt the football, Mark. And, Bob, they've only kicked 15 field goals, a total of 15 field goals on the entire season. That's just a little over one per game. It's hard to be the starting punter and kicker and not play enough to win a letter. <laughs> That's what happens when you have a real star quarterback. We'll be back with more right after this. The University of Louisville is a catalyst. UofL is making significant medical discoveries that will lead to healthier lives. We are an incubator of ideas that spawn new business and economic development. Understanding how the mind works to unlock learning for our sons and daughters. U of L is an agent for change, improving the community and the quality of life, using new discoveries to change lives. The University of Louisville, dare to be great. Well, there's a look at the aforementioned punter, Mike Wafsig, and Bob, that guy's uniform hasn't been washed all year. Well, his it's uniform's clean. white, and I saw him yawning. <laughs> But you know what? It's tough being a punter when you play for Miami of Ohio. We mentioned that Roethlisberger has pooch punted on several occasions. And they've only punted seven times, Mark, in the last five games. First time tonight. Here he is with the pooch punt. And a pretty good looking one. They're going to down it inside the five. He throws touchdown passes. And he punts for more. Let's go downstairs to Holly Rowe. Well, guys, believe it or not, Ben Roethlisberger never punted until he came to Miami. He didn't do it in high school. He was out messing around before practice one day. They saw he had a pretty live leg as they had a freshman punter. They wanted him not to have to worry about directional punting, to just punt it straight. So they enlisted Ben to do all their directional stuff. He was actually the special teams player of the week this week or this year when he put three punts inside the five-yard line. Just another talent of the multi-defensional Ben Roethlisberger. So does that increase his draft stock, Bob? I'm going to give you one more. You know, these two teams had a bowl of fun the other oh, night. Oh, okay. Louisville lost to Miami and Ben Roethlisberger, MVP bowler as well. Yeah, he's taking everything home from Mobile, or planning on it anyway. The run is Lionel Gates gained about three yards. A wonderful panoramic view of Lad People Stadium. Aerial shots above tonight's game being provided by Saturn Lightship. The entire Saturn Lightship team hopes you're enjoying ESPN 2's coverage of this year's GMAC Bowl. I was surprised you wouldn't go up in that. I blimp. thought about it, Bob. I really was. Thought about it. They didn't have first class in the blimp. It was all coached, so I passed. <laughs> 410 total yards. Is that pretty good, 410 yards in the first half? think so, and this is Lionel Gates. Get a little giddy up in his gallop. Gates. Still up. Down to the six. Daryl Hunter ran him down finally. A great burst. We talked about Daryl Hunter, 28, the fastest player in Miami history. But how about Lionel Gates right here? on the power play the kick out block right there and he just takes it missed tackle right there and right here watch this foot race you're talking about a 4 3 40 right here that is a big big play mark for louisville and daryl hunter touchdown saving 
right tackle. Bob, it almost looked like he was lining him up to try and rip or punch that ball loose. And that's a good technique in the open field, Mark, for the defensive back to come in from the backside and try to punch that football. That's a significant play right there by Daryl Hunter because he gives this defensive football team from Miami a place in which to stand. And with 12 seconds left in this first half, keeps Louisville potentially out of the end zone. Huge difference going into the locker room at halftown, down either two or three touchdowns. By the way, Saturday, PGA Tour stars John Daly, Mark Kalkovecchia, and Peter Jacobson take on teams from the LPGA and Champions Tours in a one-of-a-kind golf event. Don't miss the Wendy's Three Tour Challenge, covered beginning Saturday at 4 p.m. Eastern Time and Pacific on ABC. 12 seconds to go. It's going to be first and goal for the Cardinals. At the six-yard line, Louisville is a team that can put a lot of points on the board in a hurry as well. And Mark Louisville with one timeout. Look for them to throw the football in the end zone, obviously, right here. Don't forget about the backside tight end, Ronnie Gant, on the backside of this trips formation. First and goal. LaForce sacked back at the 12-yard line. The heat provided courtesy of Terrell Jones. With five seconds to go, that's the second sack of the ball game for him. And you have to love Terrell Jones, five foot nine. They call him the smartest player football-wise on this Miami team, Mark. About five seconds to go. If you're Louisville right here, like I said, it's a big difference whether you're going into the locker room at the half down either 14 points versus 21 points, especially when you're the Cardinals, a team that likes to move the ball on the ground. What do you do here? Well, first of all, go back to Daryl Hunter, number 28, tracking Lionel Gates down to save a touchdown. But obviously right now, I think you go ahead and kick the field goal. No timeouts left, six seconds. Don't mess with it if you're Louisville. Miami, a pressure-style defense. I'd go ahead and kick, get the points go into halftime with a little bit of momentum. I mean, it could only be 35-17. It looked like it was going to be 70 to 7 a little bit earlier in this half. Yeah, you go in uh, down 35-17, you can regroup and this GMAC Bowl does have a history of pretty startling comebacks. Second down and goal. The nose of the ball resting at the 12-yard line for Ben Roethlisberger. It has been a near Error-free first half, 16 of 20 passing for 291 yards. This makes me a little bit nervous right here, Mark, if I'm Louisville. LaFours under the center, Dan Coons to take the snap. The fade, Russell incomplete, but there's a flag. Alfonso Hodge was in on the play defending. And Mark, two seconds to go, it's going to be against Miami. And here, late in the season, teams have tried to pick on Alfonso on Hodge. The By rule, the ball is put at the two-yard line. Automatic first down. Now, Mark, I'm going to let you <laughs> make this decision. Well, if you go for it on the previous one, you have to go well, for it here. two seconds left in the half. Ball at the two-yard line. I think a big reason they're going for it here not because they have tremendous confidence they're going to make it. They know they can't stop Miami's offense, and there's going to be a bunch more points. Maybe a quarterback draw right here by Stephon LaFour. Led the conference in all-purpose yardage. Throws it into the end zone, and they hit Pater. Touchdown, Russell. <laughs> You've got to love it, Mark. They rolled the dice, and it comes up in their favor. A this compelling is finish the to the half. GMAC bowl game. <laughs> the vision of Marshall and East Carolina. That was about a 98-yard drive in about 15 seconds, Mark. That's how they do it. Russell snaring the ball with both hands and now in for the extra point. Nate Smith to try and cut that lead to just 14 points. Early in the ball game, it looked like Louisville had no defense. And even worse, no offense. The first half has belonged to Ben Roethlisberger. 35 to 21, but Louisville, the Cardinals out of Conference USA in their sixth consecutive bowl game, trying to atone for a loss last year in the GMAC Bowl, going into the locker room with a lot of confidence. Mark, I'm an old defensive coach. It's kind of fun, isn't it? <laughs>
can be. Let's go downstairs to Holly. Coach, what did you say to your quarterback as he ran off the field after the touchdown? I said, great play. He just made a tremendous effort and got us a touchdown there at the end, got us right back in the game. What does your defense have to do in the second half? Well, first thing we have to do is tackle them. You know, we've had guys there a couple times and we're having a hard time tackling them. So we got to get them down when we get there, try to find some way to get a turnover. How much momentum does this give you to start the second? I think it gives us a lot of momentum. We get the ball first, so we got to come out and score again. All right, thanks very much, Coach. Thanks, Paul. Mark? Lionel Gates with a big 88-yard run, but the first half has belonged to Roethlisberger. Right now, let's go back to the studio with Chris Fowler and Trev Alberts and Mark May. Guys? ...in the United States. Bob, you sure you don't want some of these? You didn't let me see those <laughs> on air because I would have taken them off you, but it does look good on you. Well, you know what? Hey, Miami, Ohio had a lot of beats thrown its way early in the ball game, a lot of scores, but what a change in momentum. A lot of it on that long run towards the end of the first half by Louisville. I mean, it's 35-7 to seven, Miami with six minutes and 50 seconds left in the second quarter, left in the half. Looks like they're going to score 70. But Louisville shows their explosive offense with a couple of big plays. J.R. Russell, the wide receiver, makes a great catch. Uh, Lionel Gates with the long run. Unbelievable confidence there at the end of the half for Bobby Petrino to throw the ball in the end zone with two seconds left. But it's a 35-21 game. They get the ball to start the second half. This is a GMAC, Mark. <laughs> this is a GMAC Bowl game, Mark. It's like this every year. We've seen 30-point comebacks in the history of the GMAC Bowl. Uh, high risk, high reward by head coach Bobby Petrino to get within 14. As for Terry Hepner, well, here's what he had to say with our Holly Rowe. Coach, what went through your mind when they pulled within 14 at the half? Well, you know, we had uh, we had the momentum. They were running out the clock. Our line slanted the wrong way. Uh, it was poor execution on our part. Happy with the way our offense played the first half. Big 12 officials said they think there should be a recount for the Heisman. Talk about your quarterback. What has it been like to coach, Ben, and how do you perceive that he'll finish out this game? Well, like I said, everybody, what everybody saw today was what he's been doing for us all year, getting better all the time, Holly. All right. Good luck in the he's second half. Thank you. Great player might be a bit of an understatement at that. As Louisville will get set to receive the opening kickoff here in the third quarter, Roethlisberger sparkling in the first half, 16 of 20 passing with his best work maybe yet to come. And four touchdown receptions, uh, passes. On the other end of those, uh, Nance had an incredible first half as well. Well, did you notice that little dig right there by Terry Hepner? The Big 12 officials working this game saying maybe there ought to be a recount <laughs> on the Heisman that was won by Jason White. Return out to the 26-yard line. That's number 80, Jimmy Riley. Let's take a look at our ESPN game track as... Big Ben, like his namesake, across the pond, big in everything he does, breaking two conference season records. And Louisville storming back late in the second quarter. They had not stopped Miami, Ohio, except for once in the entire game. Miami, Ohio scoring on every drive but one. First down and 10, Cardinals with the ball. Eric Shelton in a tailback. LaForce, complete, and out of bounds at the 38-yard line to Tinch. Mark, that's unbelievable right there. We mentioned 35-7 to with 6.51 in the second quarter. 192 yards, three touchdowns in the second quarter. And Stephon LaForce, only eight pass attempts in the first half, shows his ability right there, rolling to the right as a left-handed quarterback. He has lived the life of an underdog. Not that highly recruited. Michael Bush in a tailback. This is Bush who threw for a touchdown in the first half. Brought down at the 41-yard line by Pusateri. Leading tackler on that defensive unit for Miami. Michael Bush, the running back slash quarterback slash receiver. Mark, you notice right there, Louisville came out in an unbalanced line with the tight end and both receivers to the wide side of the field. Miami flips their corners. That's something Louisville wanted to do, was get those corners to the field and then come back into the boundary against them. Looking at a second down and seven. Owens in motion. LaFours with a play fake. And a good straight arm, but brought down to the 35 by Ternanande. The speedy outside linebacker, a tremendous athlete with a 
38-inch vertical jump, an all-conference performer. And we're going to get a chance to see Tarne Nande, the outside linebacker, maybe one of the best athletes to ever play at Miami. Right here, he's going to show that closing speed. Takes a stiff arm by Stefan LaForce, but gets him on the ground. I've noticed LaForce likes to put that hand up in the face of those defensive players. But Nande, 19 tackles for losses. Benches 4-10, runs a 4-4-5. He's an incredible athlete. Third down and long, 12 to go. LaForce on the predetermined run. Has the first down. LaForce all the way down to the 29, and the Cardinals alive and well. Finally tackled by Daryl Hunter. He made Steve Burke the free safety, gave him a shake, and said goodbye. Pat Narduzzi, the defensive coordinator, talked about doing some of this chaos defense, they call it. Look, everybody from Miami standing up, trying to cause havoc. May have outfought himself right there. He comes with the zone blitz. Stefan LaFour is with the lead draw up in there. And Stefan LaFour breaks down Steve Burke, the safety from Miami in the open field. First down and 10. The Cardinals offense showing a lot of life here. This is Shelton getting to the edge. Brought down at the 21-yard line. There's a flag down at the 14. Matt Pusateri, the leading tackler defensively, making another stop. But there was a flag down. Further down the field. Normally, Mark, it's holding. That's going to go against Louisville. Eric Shelton, number 32 from Louisville, an interesting story. High school player of the year in Kentucky, went to Florida State out of high school, out of Lexington, then transferred back to Louisville. Yeah, third team all-conference. Bobby was shaken up a little over a month ago in a game against TCU. And Mark, that was an incredible... Holding on the offense. Ten yards from the previous spot. Replay first down. And Mark, speaking of TCU... We, we must mention TCU should have been here in this football game this year, decided not to come because they were in finals. But the point being, Louisville was in finals. Miami was in Ohio in finals. Both of them made sacrifices. Louisville has graduation tonight. Yeah, yeah, they're walking right now. And LaFour's, meanwhile, grimacing, Bob, and uh, seemingly holding that left shoulder area with his right hand there, or his collarbone. Not going to speculate. That obviously an observation which you can plainly see. They can ill afford to lose him. And Bobby Petrino is hotter than July on the sidelines. They just tossed another flag on the sidelines. The floor is a key cog offensively for Louisville. Like I said, it wasn't highly recruited. His brother and his father put together five videotapes and sent them out to various schools and basically got interest solely and singularly back from Louisville. That's where he ended up. Waited his turn, three years behind Dave Ragone, now the main man. Try and run the ball between the tackles. That was Shelton once again. His forward progress at the 40 and another flag on the field. Emotions running kind of hot down there, Bob. Mark, I think they're going to get Terrell Jones, number three, the linebacker from Miami, coming in there with a late hit right now. That one's going to be against Miami. And, and Terrell Jones, Terry Hepner told us the smartest player on their team as far as defensive sense. After the play, unnecessary roughness by the defense. 15-yard penalty, automatic first down. You're going to see him right here come in late. Play clearly over right there. He's an intelligent guy, but that was an unintelligent play right there. Terry Hebner not going to listen to that. Don't just let it go, <laughs> Terrell. You're wrong right there. Now watching this one from the sidelines gives Louisville a first down. Inside handoff to Michael Bush. And Bush got about two yards. It'll be second down, about eight to go. Stop made by Rehaig. Let's go back to Stefan Lafours. Was holding his collarbone area. Here's the end of that last long run he made. Mark right there. He obviously did come down squarely on that left shoulder. 
and he is a left-handed quarterback. So it's going to be interesting to see how that plays out. They run it with Bush again. Got about four down to the 20-yard line. The third down and about five to go. And you have to think if you're Louisville right here on third down and five, even though it's early in the third quarter, probably four down territory based on how Bobby Petrino finished the half. He knows Miami's going to score a bunch of points. Field goals aren't going to do it. So probably two down. Not a bad place right now for play action pass, Mark. Third and about four to go, Bob. Got to get to about the 15 for the first down. Gent in motion. They bring a blitz. And Shelton's going to be stopped up short of the first down at about the 20-yard line. Beesing, John Beesing, one half of the twin combination. This one on defense with a tackle. And John Beesing's a great story. He was a wide receiver in high school, came to Miami as a wide receiver. He leads their team with five interceptions as an outside linebacker. And Louisville obviously in fourth down territory right now decides to go for it. To go for it, about five to go. LaFours has connected on his last six pass attempts. Miami in straight man-to-man, six-band blitz, Mark. They're going to run it backside pressure. The reception is good. Let's see where they give him the forward progress. The forward progress will give him at the 15, J.R. Russell. And the yellow line demarcating the first down. And Mark, and he got beyond it, Bob. Great point. And Steph on the floor again takes a shot and is holding that shoulder. You look at the backside pressure. He takes a little shot right there. Forward momentum. I think an excellent call by the Big 12 referees. And a first down for Louisville. But Steph on the floor now becomes the story. He is definitely in pain. The 10th play of the drive coming up for the Cardinals. Bush on the handoff. Broke a couple of tackles down to the 12-yard line. Michael Bush, a talented true freshman, and the quarterback, the junior, LaFleur's grimacing, writhing in pain. And an amazing story about this young guy, Mark. He comes from a deaf family. His mother, his father, his brother are all deaf. In fact, his brother plays, I believe, at Gallaudet University in Washington, D.C. He does have the capacity to obviously hear. John Justin Riscati, the backup quarterback, warming up in earnest on the sidelines. Shelton tried to get to the edge, but brought down nicely by Pusateri. Shows you why he's the leading tackler defensively. They play that quarter's coverage, and those safeties come down. Bob, I've been listening to that football 101. Mark, I get you are it. all over it in quarter's <laughs> coverage. When those safeties read run by the offensive lineman, they're coming downhill because those corners are locked on the wide receivers. This guy's 5'11", about 200 pounds, was a walk-on, three-year starter. You impressed? I like it. Third and nine. You're talking about you. Yeah. Oh, football 101. <laughs> Third and nine, blitz coming. Incomplete, in and out of the arms of Eric Shelton. And surprisingly, looks like the field goal unit is coming out of the field. But what's really surprising is they threw the ball to Eric Shelton. He only has one catch on the year. The other running back, Lionel Gates, has 22. Michael Bush has 17. Why throw it to Eric Shelton? He only has one catch. And you saw him drop that football. This is Nate Smith, 14-19, out of the hold of LaFours, the quarterback. And it's been that kind of night for the Cardinals. No good from 31 yards out. A long, methodical, arduous drive ends in no points. Terry Hepner's team taking the field when we come back. And their stellar quarterback, Ben Roethlisberger, ready to go to work. Welcome back, everyone, to the GMAC Bowl, the original home of Mardi Gras here in the United States. And what a parade they had last night downtown. Some uh, 65,000 people attending. The beads were flying. Roethlisberger on first and 10, under heat. And as always, finding a man open. Nance with the reception, and now they're going to say incomplete. Looked like he had his arms underneath it. It'll be second down and 10. But another one of those long plays, Bob. Unbelievable. 
how long some of their plays are because of, again, the catch word escapability by Ben Roethlisberger. And right here at the end, you see Nance again. A great point of holding by the <laughs> defense right there, number 25, Antoine Harris. But again, you see them create routes off of the scramble situation of Ben Roethlisberger. Second down and 10, blitz coming. He hit the hot receiver, but incomplete intended for Beesing. That's Ryan Beesing, the other half of the Twins. This one on offense. Roethlisberger now 16 of 22 with four touchdown passes, approaching a career high. And quickly, it's third down and 10. That last drive by Louisville was the longest drive of the game by either team. And Louisville on back-to-back -back downs, Mark, playing man-to-man -man coverage. And again, it looks like they're locked in man-to-man -man coverage. So Louisville deciding to come after them a little bit more here in the second half, which I think is a good plan. Miami scored on every possession of the game so far but one. And it looks like we're going to get a safety blitz coming right here off the edge. Roethlisberger found his man for the first down at the 37. Went right back to Ryan Beesing, the twin brother of John, the linebacker. Redshirted last season, contributing this year. And Miami, a great plan. Mark, I want you to look at this pass protection. It's really sprint, slide protection with this whole offensive line sliding in the direction of the quarterback. They anticipated blitz. And then Ryan Beesing right there comes with the completion. So the line slides. Ben Roethlisberger half roll. And Ryan Beeson with a nice catch right there on third and ten. The 14th career 300-yard plus game for Roethlisberger. First down and 10, Miami. Mike Smith brought down after a gain of about two. And Louisville squeezing that backside cutback play a little bit better right here. First running opportunity of the second half by Miami. Miami's offense, uh, a no huddle offense, but they're unique in the sense that, uh, Bob, they don't stress tempo. And what they do, Mark, the receivers don't huddle but actually the line huddles real close to the line of scrimmage, about two yards back. Great play action passing down right here. Second down and eight. There's the play action. And a flag down. The receiver fell down. That was Mike Larkin. And he was working on Antoine Harris. Antoine Harris and especially Josh Minkins have been victimized several times this evening. This time they're working on Harris. He was a wide receiver up until June of this year. Flag down and the officials trying to make sure that they confer and get this one right. going to be against Louisville. Look at the penalty, Mark. Antoine Harris, a converted wide receiver right there. Obviously, he's holding Michael Larkin. Again, we get a chance to look at the play action of Ben Roethlisberger. Extends that football, drops that head down to sell the play action a little bit holding more. Holding an eligible receiver by the defense. That penalty is declined. Pass interference by the defense. 15 yards from the previous spot, automatic first down. And actually both corners mark Josh Minkins down here at the, in the boundary. Right. The field judge threw the flag, so both corners. As you see, Louisville play more man-to-man -man coverage here in the second half, having a tough time holding up. Miami may come back with another play action against man-to-man -man right here by these Louisville corners. First down and 10 after the penalty. Smith. Brought down at the 46 by Rob Day, and it's been a night where Roethlisberger has used that aforementioned play-action pass with great effectiveness. Freezing the linebackers and DBs at times and making the defense pay. And time to Dan Tyler, the tight end, and he's found Nance, he's found Larkin, he's found several different receivers. Nance the primary target. Second down and 10 right here. And play action really difficult against 
zone coverage defense. That's why you see Louisville playing more man-to-man. -man. Here they come again in straight man all-out blitz. Roethlisberger incomplete. Threw it behind Nance that time. A great season Nance has had and a great evening tonight. Ten touchdown catches coming in. Over 1,300 yards receiving on the season. And Mark, you saw something right there that you see in the NFL a lot. The underthrown fade against man-to-man -man where the receiver has a chance to come back and make the play. Really a great effort right there by Martin Nance. Third and ten. Again, it's man-to-man -man coverage. There's no secret, no hiding that. Here comes Louisville again. Roethlisberger stays in the pocket. Somehow escapes. Houdini in the house, but it's dropped by Murray. Mark, who how did he that? do that? <laughs> but wait a second. I want to know who has the first pick in the NFL draft. I know it's not decided yet, but do they need a quarterback? This is 245 pounds now. One, two, three guys made to miss, Bob. Mark. And he makes a great decision. You love how he doesn't panic under pressure and finds those open receivers. You can't coach that. Now, what they've done is to coach those receivers to react off the scramble. He's going to punt this football Last now. time, Bob, he pooch punted. He put it right inside the five-yard line. And they blocked this one. It's snuffed out. And the Cardinals are going to have great field position. Marcus Jones knifing in to come up with the first decisive play for Louisville of the ball game with 6.03 to go in the third period. That's their fifth blocked punt this season. And Mark Miami getting sloppy. Drop balls and now an easy punt block by Marcus Jones. Sometimes when you get a big lead early, you become sloppy. It's hard to get that momentum and execution back on your side. One more look at that block. They had a notion that it was going to be a punt by Roethlisberger. They're going to get a chance to look at Marcus Jones. He's going to use an inside technique right here. He swims inside the, the offensive lineman, and Roethlisberger so close to the line of scrimmage, he just slam dunks it. Fortunate right there. That thing wasn't returned the other way. Louisville finally catching a break. We'll see if they can capitalize on it when we come back. Welcome back, everyone, to Mobile, Alabama and the GMAC Bowl, the fifth edition. Turning out to be a very intriguing one. Louisville storming back within 14 after trailing 35-7. to First and 10, LaFours fumbles the snap. And Beesing is right there to stop him. Louisville trying to take advantage of the block punt a moment ago by Marcus Jones. And Mark... The best way to stop play action is to blitz. And here you see Miami bringing the inside linebackers on a blitz on first and ten. Snap exchange was poor, but John Beesing, the linebacker, play action pass, it's difficult pass protection if you can dial the blitz up at the right time defensively. LaFours, they set up the screen. This is Gates. Tiptoeing down the sideline, Gates! The gate's open! <laughs> They're going to say that he was stepping out of bounds. He stepped out of bounds back at the 15. But he just kicked the turbo in and went into overdrive. You're going to see Gates right here. We're going to get an excellent block by the center, number 68, Dan Coons. But you see him tiptoe down this sidelines. Yeah, he stepped out. Mark, they're bringing this Aldridge. all the way back. Maybe if we can get a look at that again. And there's a flag. Holding oh, yeah. by the offense. Penalty is 10 yards from the spot of the foul. That, and replay second down. If we look at it again, that may have been on number 78, Travis LaFou. The left offensive tackle out there blocking. Let's look at it. Here's the screen. I want you to watch LaFue 78 right here. I think the official is going to determine right there that he grabbed that jersey. I think that's probably a good call right there. Boy, that Mark, takes the wind out of their collective it, it, sails. It really does. 5-12 to go in the third. Second and 20. LaFour is back to pass. 
on the post, and it's picked off by Daryl Hunter. It was intended for J.R. Russell, but that one hung up there, and you have to wonder if LaFour's apparent injury might have had something to do with that underthrown ball. Mark, great point. I mean, that ball fluttered in the air. It looked like J.R. Russell was open on the post route. We're going to watch this thing as it materializes right here. You're going to see the post route come right here. J.R. Russell is open. Daryl Hunter with closing speed, but you are right. That football was drastically underthrown right there in the left shoulder injury. You wonder if that was a factor, Mark. But two opportunities right there for Louisville on the screen and in the post route. Yeah, unable to capitalize after that blocked punt by Marcus Jones. And now Miami going to run the ball. That's Smith. And there's a flag down again. Obvious holding penalty right there on Miami. Call came out of the field, Judge. Which always means holding on the tight end, number 87, Matt Brandt. Hey, what about this game? Capital One Bowl Week beginning with NC State taking on Kansas. 5.30 Eastern time, 2.30 Pacific time. That's Monday, Phillip Rivers, one of the top quarterbacks in the entire nation. Look at those numbers. Seems like he's been there a long time. Yeah, he's been doesn't. playing for a lot. Over 4,000 yards passing. Mark, go back to the point. Miami with the big lead, 35-7. Six minutes left in the first half. Sloppy play, really, since that point. You know, it's hard to flip that switch back when you think a football game's over. Sometimes it can be too easy. First down and 18 here for Miami. They've led the entire way. The draw play. And a gaping hole over the right side. That's Smith. Mike Smith all the way out to the 47-yard line. They have pressed the right button when they've had to on offense. Well, Mark, they love this power play. It's about the sixth time we've seen it. Watch Jacob Bell right here, the guard pull around. The second tight end is like the fullback kicking out. They run the power. There's Bell coming around. A gaping hole right there, but that power play, really an eye formation play, but since there's no fullback, the other tight end, 89 in motion, is like the fullback. A 40-yard pickup by Smith. First down and 10 out near midfield at the 47-yard line for Miami. Another play action. Out and up. Roethlisberger giving way too much time, but it's incomplete at the 37-yard line. Martin Nance, the intended receiver. Mark, I'm going to say this. It's an endurance test for those defensive linemen and nearly those secondary players because these average plays, if we go 1 1,000, 2 1,000, 3 1,000, 4 1,000, 5 1,000, 6 1,000, this kid averaged about eight seconds of play because he moves around so it, well. It's unfair to expect the defense to cover for that. Well, the secondary can't. And the problem is, if you blitz them, Louisville has a hard time in man-to-man -man coverage. So it's a double-edged sword. He's getting some good protection from his guys up front once again on this play. Given plenty of time. And they're going to say it's incomplete. Kerry Rhodes said he came up with it, but it did hit the ground. It'll be third down and ten. That came close to being intercepted. Mark, a couple of things. It looked like... Yeah, that ball bounced. Yep. That ball bounced. Another third down right here. Don't forget about this tight end on the back side. They've thrown some cold water on Roethlisberger here in the second half. Completes it, but short of the first down at the 50-yard line to Robinson. And it'll be fourth down. Now, do we see the real punter, Wafsik, or do we see Roethlisberger stay in and punt Hold after on, the block? Mark. Hold on. Something's going on right here. On Louisville, first warning. Just a warning issued to the Cardinals. And the punter, Mike Wafsik, makes his initial 
showing of the evening with 3.28 to go in the third quarter. Averaging a little over 41 per. This guy's jersey is sparkling white. First punt of the night. At the 15-yard line, Haskins. Brought down immediately. Louisville down by two touchdowns. LaForce apparently fighting injury when we come back. Can he do it? ESPN 2's exclusive presentation of the 2003 GMAC Bowl. Under the lights at Ladd People Stadium in Mobile, Alabama, it's the fifth edition of the GMAC Bowl. And right now, Stephon LaForce, starting quarterback, 8 of 13 passing and fighting some obvious pain on the left side of his shoulder, his collarbone area. We've seen him grimacing in pain several times here in the second half. The pass underthrown, intended for Tinch. And for more, let's go downstairs to Holly Rowe. Well, guys, here's what I can tell you about Stefan LaFours. He has come to the sideline. He did not seek any treatment from any of the medical staff. He didn't want anyone to look at him. He has tried to warm up. Every time he threw the ball, he would grimace in pain. He is not 100% sure how long he can go. I saw him pull aside his backup quarterback, Roscati, and tell him to keep warming up, that he will try to go as long as he can, but that Roscati should be ready at any moment. And I'll tell you what. Turn and Nande, number 32, almost closed the chapter right there on Stefan LaFleur. He put one up underneath his chin. Second down and 10. Clark in motion. Hand off is to Shelton, who's tackled at the 21-yard line. Shelton, who dropped a critical fourth down pass a couple of series ago. The transfer from Florida State, third-team all-conference, returning back home. He's a native of Louisville, came back, redshirted a season ago. Back in uniform now with 2.50 to go in the third quarter. Mark, this big offensive tackle right here, Renardo Foster, 79, a true freshman. I, I don't think that graphic's right. I think he's more like 6'6", 320, but he has a brother that's committed to the University of Tennessee that's a senior in high school. A pass complete by LaFours to Tinch. And it's a first down. They got the first down out at the 37-yard line. And Marshall with Tinch. Tinch is your kind of guy. Plays basketball for Rick Patino, also at Kentucky. They love his toughness. And this is toughness right here. Stephon LaFours on third down steps up and makes a play. And Joshua Tinch. 6'2", 215, a great high school basketball player and football player. First down and 10 out of the shotgun. To give us to the true freshman, and boy, does Michael Bush move the pile. The pile started at about the 39, and he moved it all the way out to the 43-yard line. When you're 6'3", 230, you can do that kind of thing. And like another great former player from Louisville, Paul Horning, Oh. A big guy that can throw, run, catch. Paul Horning could also kick. <laughs> and we have not seen Michael Bush do that yet. So Paul Horning he might. has one up. <laughs> we might. Second and four. Two back formation out of the eye this time. At Shelton. Still on his feet and another first down. Into Miami, Ohio territory at the 39. And folks, Saturday, ESPN celebrating its 200th NFL telecast. New England, led by quarterback Tom Brady, looked to secure home field advantage throughout the playoffs. Saturday, they face Chad Pennington and the New York Jets. This game kicks off ESPN's double coverage weekend. Pates, Patriots, Jets, Sunday night at 8.30 Eastern time. Also available in high definition on ESPN HD. An 18-yard scamper and a first down and 10. There's Shelton again, into the boundary. Brought down at the 27 yard line. And another first down. His coach lit him up, Bob, after dropping that pass. He's a Tony well, for Well, he now. did, but just give him the ball and run it. There's Jerry Spencer, the offensive guard, on the kickout. And you see why Bobby Petrino thought they could run the football against Miami. Miami doesn't see many two-back teams in the map in the spread league. And 
Louisville, Mark, right now is controlling this second half. Backs again out of the eye. Clark in motion. Shelton gets the call again. This time right of bounds out of the 25-yard line. A gain of about three on the play. And the Saturn light ship is hovering high above Ladd Peebles Stadium tonight, providing coverage of the 2003 GMAC Bowl. The Saturn light ship teams hopes that you're enjoying this unique look at Mobile. And what a great time we've had here. The banquet yesterday, Bob, and the uh, word on the street is, man, that... Uh, at one of the previous functions, you had some good Christmas caroling going, man. You're pounding it out pretty good. I don't know what street you were on where that word came back. That, that's some inaccurate information right there. Got your CD coming out soon. Second down and six. LaFours wisely threw it away in the direction of Joshua Tinch. It'll be third down and long. And Mark... You talk about celebration. This guy made a catch right here. That's okay if you do it in the stands. <laughs> Nothing wrong with a little entertainment. The cell phones, I don't know. Sharpies are okay. I Third down you. and six. I told you. If they're going to do all that and self-promote, I'm going to say it one more time. Make them buy advertising time. It's not about them individually. It's about that team collectively. <laughs> Third down and six. Two tight ends and two wideouts. Shelton alone back. Quick three-step drop. Touchdown! Russell! J.R. Russell came up with it. Mark Louisville is back right in the middle of this football game. And J.R. Russell beat Alfonso Hodge, number nine, the corner that's been struggling late in the year. This is going to be a pass interference. Pass interference the from climb. the defense. Penalties decline. Touchdown. Had to wait and see before it became official. But J.R. Russell has brought the Louisville Cardinals to within a touchdown. And you can't say enough about Louisville fighting back in this football game. This was a 35-7 game, Mark. Six minutes left in the first half. They had one foot in the grave, <laughs> and they've climbed back in this game. Storming back with 21 unanswered points in a little less than a quarter. Stephon LaFleur's playing under duress. Russell hauling in the catch. Now within a touchdown. More after this. Louisville Cardinals out of Conference USA. They've won their last two games, looking to make it three in a row in their first meeting ever against Miami. Look at what they have done since the first quarter. They're trailed 35-7 to as late as the middle part of the second quarter. Kick comes up short at the 15. That's Smith. And Mike Smith is brought down at the 27. And what a touchdown catch by Russell. And we talked about Miami playing bump and run. You're going to see Alfonso Rogers up there. Kind of the Deion Sanders staggered stance. J.R. Russell just on a takeoff. Great delivery by Stefan. And great concentration by J.R. Russell. I have a feeling that as injured as LaFours may or may not be, I don't think he really intends on coming out of the game. Mark, you're right. This guy's putting on a show right here, J.R. Russell. First down and 10, Miami, Ohio. The Red Hawks have been stuck in neutral since the first half. They have not scored a solitary point here in the second half after putting up 35 on the board in the first half. Mark, and they've been a little bit sloppy. They've had some receivers open. They've dropped some balls. They've had a blocked punt. So they have to regroup and execute right now. And this is the guy to get them all on the same page. Roethlisberger completes the pass to Martin Nance. He was working on Kerry Rhodes with 18 seconds to go here in the third period. We said before that in the GMAC Bowl, teams have come back from as much as 30 points. We could have a repeat performance, and this might be the last college quarter for number seven for Miami, Roethlisberger. Take a good look at him. Are there more heroics ahead for number seven? We'll find out in the last 15 minutes when we come back to Lab People Stadium. Lab People Stadium, a glow at night here at the GMAC Bowl in Mobile, Alabama, the fifth edition featuring Miami of Ohio against Louisville. And 
Look at the story by quarters. It was 35 to 21 at the half. And the Red Hawks have not scored here in the second half. But a good sign here. Cal Murray breaking one off and breaking it off proper. A first down into Louisville territory at the 38. A pickup of 31 yards. Louisville Mark comes with the all-out blitz. You're going to see the safety carry Rhodes and the linebacker blitz. And you're going to see the cutback by the running back. So Louisville, it's like two ships passing in the night right there. Kerry Rhodes, the free safety. And an excellent run right there by Cal Murray. But anytime you blitz, you said it earlier, high risk, high reward. Roethlisberger out of the shotgun. Goes through his progression. Incomplete intended for Nance. Josh Minkins there on the coverage. And let's take a look at our ESPN2 game track. Some of the coaching points so far. Roethlisberger and crew, including Nance, came out white hot in the first quarter and in the first half. But in the second half, they have been stone cold, courtesy of the Louisville defense. And Louisville has now roared back with 21 unanswered points. Right now, within seven points, this is the closest they've been since the first quarter. It's second down and 10 from the 42. And Louisville again, Mark, in man-to-man -man coverage. They set up the screen, complete to Robinson. Ryan Robinson. Got a convoy of blockers down to the three. Another big play. They had good blockers out there, including Larkin and Smith. That is a backbreaker for Louisville. And an excellent call by Shane Montgomery. You're going to see the jailbreak screen. Lineman downfield. The ball thrown behind the line of scrimmage. A great play against man-to-man -man because linemen get out in front of the defense of the wide receiver and the defensive back assigned him to not make the play. So excellent call by Shane Montgomery. Jailbreak screen against the blitz. First and goal. Smith. Tackled at the two-yard line. Brought down by Brett Johnson. Mike Smith and Cal Murray have hammered away at that Louisville front of Jones, LeFew, Satterfield, and Stanley. And I'll tell you what, Mark, Ryan Robinson, number two, the true freshman wide receiver. They knew right away this kid was going to be a great player. And you see the speed that he has on that jailbreak screen. Second down and goal. Smith in a tailback. Cutting it back. They give him the touchdown. Mike Smith. He gives Miami a little bit more breathing room. But the long play, the decisive play, was made by Robinson. Mark. That was awful close right there on the cutback by Mike Smith, whether or not that ball cleared the plane of that goal line. Jared Parsegan coming in for the extra point, the great nephew of Era Parsegan, famous coach. Knocks it through, and the Red Hawks are back up by 14 points. How many more touchdown passes does LaFours have left in that arm? We'll find out in just a minute. Mike Smith, the tailback with the touchdown run a few moments ago. A very close call around the goal line as to whether he was in or not. But Ryan Robinson with the key play, the 38-yard catch and run on that jailbait screen. And you see how explosive, Mark, Miami's offense is. It's a 17th rushing touchdown this season for Smith. This is Broderick Clark. And Clark tackled at the 22. Let's go back to that touchdown run, or was it one by Mike Smith? You're going to see Mike Smith again on the cutback that we've seen all night. And right here... 
the, the question I have a tough call for the line judge who's looking in from this side, particularly right here. The line judge trying to make that call. That's a big piece of beef right there blocking that. <laughs> that is a tough, tough call right there. Did that football break the plane of that goal line? And I really think the line judge's vision was blocked on that. So a difficult call. First down and 10. LaFour is needing to respond. They set up the screen and read like a Tom Clancy novel by Beesing. Lionel Gates brought down immediately here at Lad People Stadium in Mobile, Alabama, the fifth edition of the GMAC Bowl. I'm Mark Jones along with Bob Davey and Holly Rowe down on the field. Number 15 Miami coming into this ball game with the nation's longest winning streak at 12 games. Trying to extend that to one more in 13 with a win potentially here against Louisville. And two of the most prolific offenses in the country on display. Louisville averaging 35 a game. Miami, 42. Second down and 13. LaForce dropped the ball and picked it up. And he made something out of nothing. Boy, he double dribbled, Bob, and got back to the 22-yard line. Mark, that was an unbelievable athletic move. I mean, just to drop the ball and be able to pick it up right here. He got a good bounce. Again, though, at the end of this, he's going to take a shot on this so shoulder, I, I believe. Again, the left shoulder. Not right there. I mean, he is in pain. But he shows you what a tough, tough competitor he is. And you go back to last year, he only threw seven passes, Mark, all last year. And to accomplish what he's accomplished this year, amazing. They're four of nine on third downs tonight. And again, we see the gap as we look at that red line right there, establishing the line of scrimmage between the offensive tackle and the defensive lineman. LaForce completes, but short of the first down. Caught by Tinch, and it's fourth down, and uh, see a little bit of frustration on Russell's face as well as some of the other Louisville players as fourth down comes up, and they send in the punt team. Well, Mark, I think the real frustration, as there always is, is on third and ten when you throw a two- or three-yard route and don't give yourself any opportunity to make the first down. But again, Ryan Robinson, number two, the most second most explosive punt returner in the country averaging 8.2 every time he touches a punt standing on his own 35 a line drive spiral this will be returned by Robinson at the 32 spun away from one tackler out to the 45 picks up 13 on the return after a 42 yard punt as for Roethlisberger he's got his mind on his money and his money on his mind Will he go or will he stay? More when we come back. ESPN2's exclusive presentation of the 2003 GMAC Bowl. Welcome back, everyone, to the GMAC Bowl in Mobile, Alabama. Miami leading 42-28. Roethlisberger and Miami with the ball. First down and 10. Little bootleg. Complete to Brent. Uh, Toronto, and it's another first down at the 32-yard line. And another completion for Roethlisberger. And uh, Bob, one of the big questions that beg, will he stay or will he go? Will he come back to school? Uh, one of the NFL people I spoke with before the game, minutes before kickoff, said he will probably be the first quarterback selected. Yeah, I mean, I hate to say this because I'm not close to the situation, but he's got to go. I mean, this kid's a top five pick, and in my opinion, he is the best quarterback in the country because he's so athletic, and he's only played since he was a senior in high school. It's all ahead of him. He hasn't been to all the quarterback camps, overcoached, burn out. I mean, it's all in the future, and he's six foot five, 245 pounds, tremendous mobility. When you sit down and meet him, he's a great kid. Mark, he's got to go. I mean, two words. You use this line today, Willis McGay. Yeah, he is part of the NCAA's Exceptional Athlete Insurance Program. He does have the insurance. And right now, going through the process, along with the coach of submitting his name into the NFL committee that advises potential draft picks on whether they might be 
a first round, second round, third round, wherever, gathering that information soon to come back. Second down and five for Miami. Roethlisberger with plenty of time behind his receiver at the 16-yard line. Here's what Roethlisberger had to say about his potential of coming back or going pro. Well, you know, to tell you the truth, I haven't even started to look at factors either way. Um, you know, I'll tell you off the top of my head, obviously, to stay, my teammates, to be around those guys, um, and to keep having fun, try and repeat again, you know, and um, to go, obviously, to play in the league, to fulfill a dream that I've always had. So, there's, obviously, there's pros and cons both ways, and, you know, I guess I'll start to sit down and, you know, make my decision to weigh my options after this game, but this game right now is most important to me. He is dialed in and locked in tonight. Third down and five. Mark, he does remind you an awful lot of Carson Palmer. Sacked, though, this time back of the 40-yard line. They're going to blow it dead. Marcus Jones in on the pressure again. Jones made a couple of big plays for that Cardinal defense tonight. Had the block punt and has had a couple of sacks. And you mentioned Mark Jones. You wanted me to call him. I'm Mark glad you did. Jones instead of Marcus Jones. <laughs> I'm glad you did. But he came into this game with eight sacks. And again, we see the unappreciated one, Mike Wofsick, number 16, the punter. He may letter after this game because he's punted twice. He's got to get his numbers up. <laughs> Fourth and 17. Here he is. Aiming for the corner. And they're going to say it went into the end zone. And let's go downstairs to Holly Rowe. Holly, what's coming up? Hey, stick around. You won't want to miss this. When we come back, we will talk with Ben Roethlisberger's family about how it is to be parents of one of the best college football players in the country. Welcome back, everyone, to the fifth edition of the GMAC Bowl in Mobile, Alabama. You're looking at the shot of Lad People Stadium and down in the field, Louisville. Down 42 to 28. Okay. And Ben Roethlisberger on the sidelines right now. Louisville with the ball first down and 10 from their own 20 yard line. They were within a touchdown early in the fourth period. And Mark, I like this Louisville team. I mean, they got a lot of good young players. Bobby Petrino's played seven true freshmen this year. Last year, they only played one freshman. So there's a lot of young playmakers out there. LaFours complete to Russell at the 33 and let's go to Holly Rowe with Team Roethlisberger. Well I'm here with Ben's mom Brenda and his dad Ken and his sister and first of all growing up Ben was all district all state in so many sports how did you keep up with him as a parent? We just went one, from one bleacher to the other it was really fun. What's it been like this year seeing him succeed on a national scale? Uh, we're just proud of him and the whole team they just support each other so well and, and one's down the other picks them up so it's been a real team effort this year. Dad you played at Georgia Tech and your coach said that your son doesn't like to be bad at anything he wants to be the very best on the team at everything how did he learn that? Owen oh, Holly, it's gonna be a pick Pusateri touchdown Miami well they gave Roethlisberger a break and kept the offense off the field and did it themselves Matt Pusateri, the starting strong safety, got the pick six. And a unique play design right here by Louisville. They start to boot. He scrambles back to the left, throws the ball across the field. Matt Pusateri, a three-year starter, their number one tackler, a former walk-on. Mark his third interception of the year. And that just about sacked the bats. Well, it's interesting. You know, b has got two touchdowns off of interceptions. Nande has one, and Pusateri now joins that club. Miami leading 48 to 28, just under eight minutes to go. Just when it seemed like Louisville was gonna mount a serious challenge, the Red Hawks counter, and now lead by 21 points. And let's go back to Holly Rowe and Team Roethlisberger. It was an easy one that time, Holly. Well, we are back with Ben before we were so rudely interrupted by, you know, play on the field. But 
You played at Georgia Tech, and I was saying, how did your son get such a competitive nature? I think growing up, we always used to do everything. We played ping pong and go out and play basketball, and just always, the whole family was always into sports, and just came natural. He has said that your influence growing up was the best thing for him because you didn't push him into sports. How hard was it for you to not push him and to pull back and let him want to do it? Uh, the key is for him to have fun. That's the same thing with any kid that's playing, is for them to have fun. Once you start pushing, it's not fun anymore, so it was easy. I know the hardest thing coming up to think about is what his future holds. I know he has applied to the NFL to see what his status would be. In your heart, what would you tell your son to do? Um, we pray a lot about it, and we tell him the same thing. And that's uh, the best way to get an answer and to really think things through. So he's had some tough decisions to make. So we're with him whatever he does. And mom, for you, he has a chance to either come back next year and possibly be a front runner for the Heisman or play in the pros. What would you tell him to do? Just follow your dreams. Wherever he wants to go, we're behind him 100%. All right, thanks for joining us. Guys, back to you. All right, Holly. Going back, excuse me, Mark, something Ben's dad said, it's fun for him. You know, you watched him. I watched him yesterday at that luncheon we had. There was probably 3,000 people there, and he sat up at that front table, and he was having fun. I mean, the Miami band came in. Uh, I mean, he's enjoying himself. And he's not burnt out on football. He's only played quarterback since his senior year in high school. And that's why I think he's a surefire pro star. Still getting better, too, Bob. Out of bounds at the 25-yard line is Williams. And here's what Roethlisberger had to say about the influence of his father. What he's done for me athletically is he's never pushed me to do anything that I haven't wanted to do. He never was the one to say, I'm going to put you on this team or let's go out and do this, let's do this. It was, do you want to go throw? Do you want to be on this team? You know, uh, I'll go out and play with you anytime you want to. Just, you know, say something. And I think that's something that a lot of people don't get. You know, he didn't burn me out by making me go do things. He just let me, whenever I wanted to do, I could do it. I had a nice chat with him in the lobby earlier today, and uh, he actually said he was thinking about playing on the uh, Miami, Ohio basketball team, but... Uh, once Coach Petrino got wind of that, he squashed that real quickly. Pardon me, uh, once um, Coach um, Hepner got wind of that, he, he squashed it real quickly. Well, I'm going to give him some unsolicited Go ahead. advice from a third party. <laughs> Stay off those basketball courts until after that draft. When is the draft? In March or April? April. Yep. Don't play any basketball. Don't do anything silly until after that NFL draft. Don't even touch the combines, huh? Well, I'm not saying not to do that, <laughs> but I'm saying don't be out there jumping around on that basketball. Yeah, that's a good idea. First down and 10. 7.39 to go. Louisville with a daunting task ahead. Down 21 points. LaFours to Gent. Gent, the all-conference tight end, down to the 20-yard line, and first down and 10 for the Cardinals. Talked about Gent and his productivity over the last four years. All-conference performer for Louisville. Underwent two knee surgeries since the middle of the last season. Has shown a lot of steely resolve and resilience to bounce back. And he's used to playing really wide receiver because John L. Smith was a four-wide receiver. Offense, spread offense. And you see the big tight end right here in the open field. You're right, Mark. Comes back from two knee surgeries. And I think this power offense has helped him because he's learned to be a blocker, also go in motion and do different things as we see big Michael Bush right there, the true freshman get it there. Bush, uh, one of the many talented players this year for Louisville. There's Gent, the senior, perhaps moving on to the next level, the first four-time first-team all-conference USA player in the conference's history. I'm going to put you on the spot. Go ahead. Should TCU have accepted this bid and be here, with no disrespect to Louisville, who subbed in for them, I would say yes, they should, because it seems like at times academics and athletics are always in conflict. It's just part of the beast. You have to juggle both of them to do both of them. And I'm not so sure that it's valid that they're not here. I agree, Mark, because both these teams are in finals as well as we see Joshua Tinch, number nine, the football and basketball player make a play. And here's an interesting angle right here with the red line, line of scrimmage, the yellow line, the first down marker. Who controls that red line? Mark wins right here, particularly on third and one. And the defense of Miami and the Red Hawks won that battle. Lionel Gates stopped up. 
And John Glavin, number 65, right here, is going to scramble up off that ground. And he controlled that red line this time, Mark. He won that battle, getting penetration in the backfield. Great pursuit right there by number 50, Phil Smith. But that red line, I don't care if you're spread offense or whatever, you better control that red line. Now, no doubt that uh, Louisville's going to go for it this time. The nose of the ball on the 17-yard line. I know one thing. Throw it to J.R. Russell. He's lined up out here on Daryl Hunter, number 28. You see J.R. Russell in motion. And move him around. LaFour's complete to Russell. Stopped on a dime. And how much change was left? Russell brought down at the five-yard line. And he got the first down. It's first and goal. And again, you see Stefan LaFleur throwing on the run. Little pirouette move right there by J.R. Russell. No give up in Louisville's football team, Mark. Not at all, and here comes Gates. Gates stopped up shy of the end zone at about the one-yard line. Gates came into the game with 10 touchdowns. Rushing, 5.3 yards per carry. And Gates, an interesting story. Out of Florida, highly recruited. Florida, Florida State, Miami. Came to Louisville. Great ability, a lot of potential. Has struggled at times. But this probably has been his best football game, Mark, since he's been at Louisville. A good call, second down and goal. Oh. And an interception. Nanday. Just when it seems... Like Louisville is mounting another serious challenge, they implode. Turning Ande, turning back the challenge of Louisville. With 4.24 to go in the fourth quarter, the third interception of the game for the Red Hawks. And Louisville goes to the power pass. They're going to sneak the fullback out in the pass in the route, but the linebacker, Turner, Turner Nande, is going to undercut right here in front of the fullback. And Turner Nande, Mark, that is his fourth interception of the year. And that guy right there, LaFour, is a monument to frustration right now. Tyler in motion. This is Murray. Murray got about five. Well, Monday, 5.30 p.m. Eastern on ESPN. It's the Mazda Tangerine Bowl. Phillip Rivers and NC State taking on the Kansas Jayhawks. At 5.30 Eastern, 2.30 Pacific time. That's Monday, part of Capital One Bowl Week. We will be bowling on ESPN and ESPN2. Got to get myself one of those HD TVs, Bob, and uh, check out that new service. I am told that it is everything it is hyped up to be and more. Second down and four. Smith weaving his way and you see towards Miami. the first down. Again, Mark, sorry to interrupt you. Continue to run that power play and let's talk about Miami longest winning streak in the nation they're now going to stretch this thing to 13 number 11 in the BCS highest rated non BCS team and I was impressed watching them practice Tuesday the seniors last practice and they have a tradition where every senior talks at the end of practice and then picks out an underclassman that he hands his practice jersey down to and a symbol of carrying on the leadership next year. This is a good football program. Yeah, they had 17 seniors participate in that annual rite of winter when they pass along the jersey. And, you know, you brought up a good point, Bob. Now, Coach Terry Hepner's crew looking at the longest winning streak once again in the nation, extending it perhaps to 13 games should they hang on here with just under three minutes to go. I would love to see... The Red Hawks right now play against some of those BCS teams. I'd like to see how they do against teams like Iowa, like Florida, that we'll see in the Outback Bowl on New Year's Day at 11 a.m. Eastern time on ESPN. Mark, I know this offensively with the weapons they have at the skilled positions, starting with probably the best quarterback in the country. They can compete with anyone in the country. There's Cal Murray. Murray on the loose out near midfield at the 49-yard line. 
Mark. You look at Roethlisberger, that's the anatomy of a quarterback, Bob. Well, we'll kind of break him down right here. The first thing you talk about is head. I'm going to talk about focus, all these distractions going on. He's playing the best football of his career late in the season. Those, those distractions aren't bothering him. The second thing, arm strength. He makes all the throws. He throws the deep ball. He throws the deep comeback, and he throws on the run. He's athletic. He was a shortstop in baseball, a point guard basketball. Bottom line, Mark. I think he'll be the first quarterback drafted next year. I think he's a can't-miss guy. And this is Cal Murray giving him a little bit of help. And for more, let's go downstairs to Holly Rowe. Well, guys, we talk about all of the attributes of Ben Roethlisberger, but here's what I like about him. He's not a me guy. Earlier this year, trying to promote him, the concession stands at Miami wanted to come up with the Roethlis burger to sell. He said, absolutely not. This is not about me. So I have a feeling that we're not going to see him pulling out any cell phones or burgers in the NFL. <laughs> hey, that's a good. Don't give him the idea, though, Holly. The Roethlis burger. I like that. The school has set up a website, where have you been, B-E-N.com, which uh, is a pretty good website. Logged on to it this afternoon back at the hotel. And uh, it's interesting. He has been on a weekly segment of uh, ESPN's Game Night Radio Show. Uh, so much so that, uh, Bob, I think they're talking about him getting some of the company pension. Yeah, you better keep an eye on him. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's, he's a heck of a kid. He came in at 6'4", 180. Now he's 6'5", 245. He runs a 4'8", 40. And time now for our Capital One Players of the Game, Roethlisberger. Going for over 300 yards once again, four touchdowns, and J.R. Russell for Louisville with seven catches for 144 yards, and not a me guy, but a bright future for Roethlisberger. Timeout, Miami, Ohio, back after this. Here in Dallas, Texas, the chase continues for the NCAA Division I Women's Volleyball Championship. Tonight in national semifinal number one, the 13th seeded Minnesota Golden Gophers take on undefeated top seed, the USC. 30 seconds to go. Miami, Ohio leading 49-28. And during the break, Ben Roethlisberger accepting congratulations from his teammates. Rife with emotion right now. And those congratulations seem to be saying a lot more. They seem to be saying, we know you might not be back. And if you're not... We love the fact that you played for us and you were our teammate. And this one is over. Miami extending its nation-leading 13-game winning streak by virtue of a 49-28 win over Louisville. Losers for the second consecutive time in the GMAC Bowl. In Miami, Ohio. Their first bowl win since 1975. And right now, Holly Rowe is standing by with the winning coach, Terry Hepner. Coach, the first bowl game since 1986, 13 straight wins. How have you done it? Wow, well, I'll tell you what. I'm really proud of this football team. That was a gut check, you know. We talked at halftime. They got the momentum. We came out. I'm really proud of our defense, the way they played the second half. Big plays. Ben Roethlisberger is the best quarterback, the best player in this country. This is a great football team. I love these guys. Coach, I know that it, you wanted to wait until after the season to figure out what's going to happen with Ben. What is going to happen for his future with the NFL? Uh, we're we're going to talk. Uh, and, uh, you know, I'm sure we'll do what's best for Ben. Obviously, he's a great – you saw him. Everyone saw him tonight again. Uh, we didn't help him much the second half. A lot of drop balls. But uh, he, he's phenomenal. I know I love him. There's my, my real son, but I love him like a son. All right. Well, congratulations on an amazing season, Coach, and thank you. Thank you, Holly. Great job. All right. We will get back with Holly on the field in just a few moments with Ben Roethlisberger. But, Bob, uh, a very uh, interesting game in terms of ebb and flow. What happened, uh, Miami, Ohio came out and stormed the gate, stormed out of the gate, and jumped out to a big lead, and then things really turned the late stages of the second quarter, Louisville made a game of it. No question. I mean, give Louisville a lot of credit. Showed a lot of heart coming back in this football game when it was 35-7. But let's give credit to both these teams. I mean, it is a long, long season. These players start in August. First of all, they stay there all summer. 
student body goes home in the fall, student body goes home for Christmas. These kids haven't had any time off. It's great to win a bowl game. But let's keep in mind, these kids lay it out there on the line for us to enjoy watching this. And our uh, Capital One player of the game is standing by with Holly Rowe, Ben Roethlisberger. Holly? Ben, what was it like to end the season with a win here on your 13th straight win? This means a lot. It means a lot for the university, for the conference, for these seniors. It's their last game, and, you know, we wanted them to go out on top and, and finish this storybook in, in, in the right way. I know you've gotten a lot of the attention, but what was it like being a part of this team this year? It means so much. This is probably the closest, most talented team I've ever been a part of. Uh, I'll never forget any of these guys, and it, it really means a lot to, to be a part of such a uh, talented team. I hate to ask at this point, but I know you've applied to the NFL to see what your position might be. What have you heard from them? Uh, I haven't heard anything back yet. Have you any thoughts about what you might do? Uh, I'm not real sure yet. Maybe I'll make a decision soon. All right. Well, thanks for your time and a great career. Thanks, Holly. I appreciate it. Thank you. Sorry to ask you that. And if this is his last game as a collegian, what a way to go out for Roethlisberger. Red hot to start the game. and. As his coach said, he didn't get a lot of help in the second half, but made the big plays in the second half when it counted too, Bob. And Marquis did, and Terry Hebner said he didn't get a lot of help, but I'll say this, he does have an outstanding supporting surrounding cast. Mike Larkin, the wide receiver. Martin Nance, the wide receiver. Ryan Robinson, the wide receiver. There you see Mike Larkin, and they're able to run the football. So he has a good surrounding cast with skilled players, but what sets him apart is his ability to run and stay alive. And how did he finish way down there in the Heisman voting? That's what I'm still trying to figure out. Well, Mark, but once again, if you look ahead, maybe this is why, and I think it's a long shot maybe that he would come back. All these players are coming back next year. He could come back and have a chance to win the Heisman Trophy a and, year from now. And the now. thing about Roethlisberger, he has handled all the accolades very well. In fact, last year after a loss against LSU, he emailed head coach Nick Saban and told his team that, told Saban that, hey, I like the way your team plays. You guys have a lot of class. Takes a lot for him to say that in a losing situation. Our final score, once again, Miami 49, Louisville 28. Aerial coverage provided by Saturn Lightship. And don't forget that coming up next, the 2003 NCAA Women's Division I Volleyball Championships. Semifinal action of that as USC takes on Minnesota on ESPN right now. It's Sports Center. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. For more, log on to ESPN.com. For Bob Davey, Holly Rowe, and the rest of our talented crew, you never get a chance to see behind the camera. I'm Mark Jones. Good night, everyone, from Mobile.